Word Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Now accepting Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co. Or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 5th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you to spread liberty with a smile. It's The Onion Radio News. A man on TV urges the mass purchase of Listerine. This is Doyle Redland reporting. In what is believed to be the widest reaching appeal ever made by an individual on behalf of an oral hygiene aid, an unidentified man urged millions of people across the U.S. to purchase Listerine brand antiseptic mouthwash today. Experts are baffled as to why a person with the power to reach millions would choose to present an oral hygiene-related message. FCC spokesperson Grant Yarborough. Well, this individual should be so obsessed with oral hygiene as to demand that several million bottles of Listerine be simultaneously purchased as baffling. The man, described as a handsome, trustworthy-looking individual in his early 30s, emphatically stressed that Listerine should be purchased over other inferior mouthwash brands. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything toll-free number for you, 855-450-FREE. We invite you to, uh, again, take control of the show here and take control of the topic, whatever it's been that's uh, been on your mind this week. Many of you listening to the show tonight don't get the show during the week, so you haven't had a chance to uh, to speak out without being screened out by most of the other talk shows in the business. We've got a very light screening policy here at Free Talk Live. Just want your name and where you're calling from, and, and briefly what you want to talk about. One or two words is sufficient. That'll get you on the air to share whatever it is you have to share with our wonderful audience. And to start things out here tonight, by the way, in the studio with you, it's Ian. And Mark. Uh, to start things out here tonight, we've actually got a special guest, and I don't remember the last time we had a guest on Free Talk Live. It's been a while. That It might have even been this guy. Uh, Adam Kokesh is, <laughs> uh, is back with us. And uh, Adam, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Hey, thanks so much for having me, gentlemen. It's always a pleasure, and it's a super pleasure to actually be able to talk to you, not from inside a, a prison cell, um, <laughs> because you were looking at going to to, uh, to prison for a number of years on some felony charges. Uh, let's rewind real quick here for our listeners who aren't familiar with you and the situation, and take back to uh, take us back in time to summer of 2013 when you got arrested ostensibly for uh, toting a shotgun in Washington, D.C. Can you kind of recap uh, what was going on? Well, let's take the ostensibly out of that. There was no green screen involved. Okay, and, good. <laughs> and, uh, yes, we. well, even to go back at once. There were conspiracy <laughs> theories about you, and so, yeah, it's nice to know what the, the truth yes, was. I'm conspiring to embrace people to be the leaders and alphas of their own lives and to embrace the message of freedom. Yeah, and Sorry I think what that. one thing I want made really important, um, that I think is really important here, is, is that uh, this was all sort of about a march you wanted to do. Exactly. Where, where you were going to walk from, you and some people were going to do walk from Virginia, where it is completely legal for Americans and people of in, in the geopolitical area known as Virginia to walk around with guns open. It's called open carry. And you were going to walk across a bridge into an area where guns are completely illegal, pretty much. Well, next to that, but yes, and and that was the idea. That's where I was going one step back here. And even after we announced that and had, uh, you know, it, it turned out to be a, a lightning rod for debate. And I, I uh, you know, got in over my head a little bit with the organizing, especially considering the challenges I faced in May of that year when I was arrested in an, a marijuana prohibition uh, anti-marijuana prohibition rally in Philadelphia for assaulting a police officer who had assaulted me. It was one of those absurd cases where he bumped into me while going to arrest someone else for smoking pot while I was breaking no laws at all. And uh, because he bumped into me and I was in his way, apparently I assaulted him. Mm -hmm. And I ended up doing a week in, in the federal penitentiary there 
And uh, unlike, I want to say uh, thanks to our, the, one of the other organizers of that event, N.A. Poe, who's a great activist comedian with the Panic Hour out of Philly, uh, who spent a week in, in – it was like solitary confinement, but they felt they had to put both of us together. So it was kind of an interesting <laughs> – and um, – he uh, he took a plea uh, or, or a, a, a deal for uh, being released on pro on on um, on bond, and I said, "Screw that! You don't have a case. This is ridiculous. Wait till the video comes out. You guys are going to make fools of yourselves." So I said, "I'm just going to stay in jail. You know, you can. You know, I'm not because they said if I if I went out, I would have to give up my right." To, uh, to own a firearm or to, to, to possess a firearm as a condition of that release. And I was like, well, gee, that's an interesting coincidence, isn't it, considering we have this event coming up? Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when I realized I wasn't going to be getting out right away there, uh, I, I said, let's do this as a, a you know, march on 50 state capitals and uh, got that word out while I was in jail. But I was released the next day because – uh, basically, they backed down, and the the judge knew that the prosecutors and the park police who did that didn't have a case. But uh, this is this has sort of been a, a, a vendetta that the park police have had against me since um, since I started regularly revealing their incompetence on YouTube. Yeah, you would say. go into the streets in D.C. and in the parks with your camera, your or your cameraman, and. Uh, you'd corner these guys and you'd ask them tough <laughs> questions and they looked pretty bad so they it's it's not unreasonable to believe that uh, that you were being targeted so but then again you showed up in uh, Liberty Plaza was it in Freedom DC? Plaza Freedom yeah, Plaza Freedom, the ironically named right and with a with a shotgun it was like what five in the morning tell us the story there what how'd that go come on I haven't got up at five in the morning since I was in the Marines yeah right no it was it was, it was like seven eight o'clock something like that. And I went out to make a point, one that, you know, I personally wasn't backing down. And one of the legitimate criticisms of the way that this march was coming together, and part of this was because, you know, I spent a week in jail in Philly, that it, it wasn't being uh, properly organized. And, and I would agree in that there was some risk being taken on. So I said, you know what, guys, you know, I'll, 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 I'll take that on myself and, and, you know, make the statement that way. And I made the video uh, in, in a way to show that you could do this, you could do it without hurting anybody, and, and we got away with it. The only reason that anything happened was because I posted the video on YouTube, which led to uh, a pretty ferocious raid on my home, which was not the, not the first, but the second time that the United States Park Police sent more men after me than bin Laden. <laughs> and this time, the, the uh -huh. time before that was a, a, a marijuana rally at the White House a, a, a month or two earlier, but this was um, actually just just uh, just about a month before that. Uh, this time they sent an armored vehicle and not one but two helicopters. They had wow. my home in Herndon, Virginia. At, at the it was, wasn't it park police, FBI, local cops? Who all was involved in that raid? It was multi-jurisdictional, yeah. right? Yeah, it was. I, I mean, it was crazy because you had the park police leading it, and yes, the United States Park Police has a SWAT team and an armored vehicle sure. and flashbang grenades and laser sights and dogs. And I just want to say I'm so grateful that they started with the flashbang grenade because they threw it at my dog. And uh, if he hadn't been so freaked out and run upstairs to his bed, they would have shot him. Oh, that's, that's he's what so happened. sweet. I'm so glad he made it through that. Yeah. My great, my great puppy Baloo. He's yep. a, he's a hundred pound pit Dane mix. So you know they have an excuse to shoot those right sure. away. But they shoot Chihuahuas too. So oh yeah, they don't say. discriminate. <laughs> uh, there was a corgi shot not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. not, not yeah. surprised by that. So they come yeah. in there into your home, and you of course weren't really expecting this, were you? Was this well, a surprise? No. And and this is where I feel kind of silly and and not having this very well planned out. And I'm sure y'all as well experienced activists can appreciate that uh, some civil disobedience is, is done on a big scale, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's well planned out. It's true. And, uh, you know, I, li I like to quote my favorite statist, Donald Rumsfeld, when, when people like to criticize this action. And there's plenty of, of fair criticism to go around, but I, I hope later on tonight we can get into the more uh, strategic criticism, which, which I think is, is really important about the book that I'm focusing on now. And, you know, how we actually win converts to the message of freedom. Mm -hmm. But uh, Donald Rumsfeld famously said, you don't go to war with the army you wish you had. You go to war with the army you have. And, uh, you know, this this overeager activist decided to go out and not make appropriate legal plans. And I, I was expecting a knock on the door, but I was not expecting the a full on uh, raid. Yeah. And uh, they, they had uh, there was the, the park police SWAT team. There were several squad cars of uh, blue suit park police officers 
There was about half a dozen officers who were wearing ski masks. That just we to be clear, in case someone's just now tuning in, <laughs> we've got Adam Kokesh on the line with us uh, from formerly Adam versus the Man. We'll talk about your new show here in a little bit. I'm excited about that. Uh, but we've got Adam Kokesh here. He just was sentenced for some of the things that we're, we're describing. But i just like to clarify, despite all these cops with all their equipment and gear and guns and tanks, uh, you had not been accused of hurting anyone. There was no one who ever accused you of hurting anyone in this uh, in this instance or any instance uh, that I'm right. aware of. And so all of this was because you recorded a very short, what, 20-second, 29-second video yeah. in Washington, D.C. while carrying a shotgun. That's why these men with guns came into your home, invaded your privacy and the privacy of your roommates, and took you out of there in handcuffs. They found, uh, what, some guns and some drugs? Yes, that's correct. And they, they really turn the house inside out. And, and, you know, one of the things that was in dispute in the legal issues here in Virginia was the scope of that warrant and that it was a product of this video because I cooperated with them right away. I was ready to face the five year felony and have that court case. And again, lack of legal planning, as well as I, you could say simply being outmaneuvered by the government, they uh, prevented us from having that day in court in D.C. But now the law's been overturned anyway. All right. I know you can stick with us for a little while, so uh, hang on, Adam. We're going to come back with more with Adam Kokesh. He's got a new show. It's called The Freedom Line, thefreedomline.com. It's uh, it's Adam, you know, just a different show. We'll find out from him <laughs> what actually inspired the name change, because I like it. I, I think it was a good choice. We'll find out more here in moments, and you can t- uh, call in with questions, 855-450-FREE. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get hipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Go. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live live Saturday edition here to take your calls about anything, though right now calls for Adam Kokesh will be given priority. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And that number is brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, you have to take steps to protect it. You can't expect anybody else to do it for you. But luckily, you don't have to do the programming work. ProXPN's already done that for you. You go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Download their software, and you can install it on Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, even Linux. Those setups a little different for Linux users. It's pretty simple. You get ProXPN up and running, and your internet connection becomes encrypted, meaning that your own internet service provider, whether it's your cell phone company or cable modem or DSL, they won't know where you're going and what you're doing anymore. Right now, they're probably logging every website you visit and every search term you enter for, as, some cases, as long as five years. You can stop that by getting ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And you can actually start for free. Download the software tonight. Get started right away. But you're going to want to upgrade to the premium account where you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can connect to, the ability to privately torrent, and even get past regionally blocked websites. Uh, plus, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits, and you even get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And the money's not very much. It's only about 5 bucks a month if you use our discount code to get 50% off. That brings that price down to around 5 bucks a month on the annual account. The code is FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50, all one word, at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Plus, you'll get 62% off if you use this code and pay with Bitcoin. The Bitcoin code is FTLBTC, like the uh, the Bitcoin, FTLBTC. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, get started there, use those discount codes, FTL50 or FTLBTC, and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. That's ProXPN.com slash FTL. We're back with Adam Kokesh from the Freedom Line, formerly the host of Adam versus the Man. We'll get into that, talk a little bit more about what the change was and what motivated it. I'm really curious to hear that. Uh, but we're still doing kind of the recap, uh, Adam, for our listeners who maybe are they're new to you. Uh, you know, we've always got new people tuning in every night on Free Talk Live. In fact, I want to welcome our newest affiliates, uh, WOBM 1160 and also WADB, their sister station simulcasting on 1310. They're heard in Brick Township, Lakewood, and Asbury Park, New Jersey. So welcome aboard to all of our new listeners there. And so many of them may not know you yet, Adam Kokesh. You're a host of a, of a television program. You'd been on RT in the past. You went off of RT and started doing your own internet thing. And ever since then, uh, there was this issue where the feds came in and they raided your home. Um, over you having a shotgun in a protest event that you'd created in Washington, D.C. They came in, they found some guns in your house, and alleged, and apparently they found some drugs. Uh, and usually when you get hit with gun and drug charges, it tends to make the charges more severe. Did they hit you with anything well, like that? Well, first, Ian, when, when you say the feds, it makes it sound a lot more serious than it really is. I mean, we're talking about the United States Park Police. These are... <laughs> These are the dregs of the federal law enforcement. Barrel. I bet it felt serious when they had machine guns and tanks at your house, though. I mean, that's pretty serious stuff. 
Well, it's, it, they're just as likely to be trigger happy with a you know 357 revolver as with an assault rifle, and sure. they're, they're, it doesn't make them any smarter or any dumber. These are just uh, these cops are as likely to shoot your dog as any other cop. I mean, this is a pretty dangerous situation. Well, maybe a little less uh, accountability for these guys, being as they they are technically feds. So I, I yeah. do appreciate that. But yeah, the charges that I faced in D.C were the ones that I wanted, you know, for carrying a rifle or shotgun outside a home or place of business mm -hmm. that I wanted to be able to challenge on constitutional grounds. And with all the other charges that they ended up bringing against me in D.C., I ended up getting bullied into a corner into taking a plea deal. And again, uh, you know, I, I could blame it on myself on, on poor legal planning, or I could just say that I was outmaneuvered by the feds. But um, I, 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 don't, I think if I, I know that I'm capable of outmaneuvering those guys, if I put the forethought into it, in this case, it really was a matter of rushing into something. It was hasty. So, wait a minute. Clarify clarify something for me. So, you got charged in D.C. with the uh, the possession of the gun in, in public kind of charge. But you said they hit right. you with other charges because the gun and drug in your house charges, that was Virginia that hit you with those, right? Right. Well, they th well and, this, and you know how it is, Ian. Anytime you break any law, if uh, you're interacting with a police officer, they can charge you with uh, resisting, mm -hmm. with disorderly, with, uh, you know, conspiracy to, con you know, to commit a crime. There, there's so many because practically everything's illegal. And the legal system is set up this way for the government to have absolute control every every over every individual that it wants to suppress. And I, I don't think I'm I, I don't mean to to suggest that. I'm the target of any kind of conspiracy, except that I've, you know, stuck up and in a lot of ways and gotten hammered down. That's just I what happens. I mean, that, yeah. that's just what happens when people right. stand up for freedom. If they're standing alone, they're more likely to be hammered down, which, of course, is one of the reasons why the Free State Project is such a great idea. But even then, the people who are the primary sort of movers, the more visible activists like myself are, are being targeted. They take some lumps. I, I'm going to court uh, in two weeks facing two years in jail because I changed my name legally and uh the next day went and got a driver's license under my given name my birth name and they said that that was a criminal act they said that was what's mm. called unsworn falsification But they said that's what you had to do in order to get a driver's license at the same time <laughs> uh no that's not what they said mark uh okay. i could have gone to the social security administration and gotten some sort of paperwork for them All right. from them well, you asked their bureaucrats and their bureaucrats said it was fine the bureaucrats did not stop me from performing that act so ultimately <laughs> they assisted me in my, my misdemeanors complicit. Yeah, uh, so it's ridiculous, though. I mean, it was clearly political targeting, clearly targeting me, you know, because of what, uh, because of my, whatever level of renown or infamy that uh, that I have up here. So well, it's no I, different. I want to say, uh, first of all, I need to really clarify that I was definitely not standing alone, and I, I want to thank everybody who stood with me in this. And there were thousands of uh, fans and supporters who wrote to me while I was in jail. And you guys, I mean, I, I took a little... Uh, inspiration from the way you guys talk about the Keene Spiritual Retreat as your county jail there. Yeah. And I, I refer to my time, uh, just so people know that part of the story, I did my first three days in a torture chamber, in, and maybe that's a dramatic term for it, but in the Fairfax County Jail, I had a room that was too cold to sleep, I had a t-shirt and shorts, the lights were on 24 oh, hours, God. no mattress, bugs in the cell. I ended up losing 15 pounds in the first two months I was in jail when wow. I was in solitary. And uh, that, but then I got transferred to regular solitary for my own protection, of course. Uh, and then I did my last two months in uh, general population. And when you have that kind of support behind you, the guards treat you differently and mm -hmm. the inmates certainly treat you differently. And I, I told every guard, everybody I came across, especially the guards, you know, hey, can I tell you something before you go? You're a free, beautiful, independent human being, and you should never let anyone tell you otherwise. Oh, that's nice. But uh, it was it was a great outreach opportunity, and I refer to it as my government-induced, taxpayer-funded spiritual retreat. <laughs> Adam Kokesh is with us. He's the host of The Freedom Line at thefreedomline.com. So you were sentenced on Friday uh, in the Virginia case. And uh, we'll talk about that sentence coming up here. More with Adam Kokesh. If you've got a question, uh, feel free to dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And it doesn't have to be a question about the criminal charges. It could be about you know what he's got coming up next. And we'll ask him that on the way. 855-450-FREE uh, is the toll-free number. We've got Skype as well, although if you're a Skype caller, you'll have to wait until Adam gets off the line. So if you want to question Adam, you have to call the toll-free number 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. 
Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. If you own a business, you need customers, right? Well, your potential customers are listening to this radio program right now, and I can help you reach them. Hi, I'm Matt Brower, a national marketing executive at the radio network responsible for this program. I can help you customize a national radio campaign that fits your budget, large or small, while targeting your specific audience. Call me to learn how radio advertising can make your business more profitable. 877-996-4327, extension 128. That's 877-996-4327, extension 128. Well, today was an historic occasion in Pennington. That's right, Diane. The entire town turned out to honor Paul Webster, the area's one gay man with Pennington's first ever gay pride parade. Paul, a 33-year-old hardware store owner, was too shy to ask for a parade, but that didn't stop almost 2,000 residents from showing their support for his homosexuality. Mayor Sue Hallinan organized the parade and even shipped in some of her own money to pay for decorations. Well, I was channel surfing one day and I came across a program about the gay pride. Next time I went to the hardware store, I said, Paul, we're going to throw you a parade. And he just said, oh, please don't do that. I don't want that. I beg you. He just didn't want us to go to the trouble. Uh, he doesn't want to ride on the penis float. Uh, he gets motion sickness, so uh, we're going to have him hold the reins instead. And Penningtonians have already decided on a fairy tale theme for next year's parade. Oh, that'll be great. And if Paul has a boyfriend, they can both be dressed up as kings. Terrific idea. This is the Onion News Network. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We're here live on this Saturday evening edition of the program. The toll-free number is, as it always is, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, Ian here. And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are on the site. Those other talk show hosts charge you for their websites. Most of them. Adam Kokesh is in the group who does not uh, with us here on Free Talk Live. But go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive for free. So I recently read a new novel about liberty. It's called Ant Farm. And it's based on the Animal Farm uh, book by uh, George Orwell. It's a book that even Gary Johnson, the libertarian uh, 
presidential candidate has uh, praised. I loved it. It took complex issues like military protection, judicial systems, currency, and dozens more and explained them in ways that the average Joes can understand, even young adults. This is something totally that young adults can can uh, grok. It's a relatively short book, just like a- Animal Farms, a relatively short book. And you can go get the first four chapters completely free. That's almost half the book. All you have to do is go to animalfarmbook.com. Stephen Aaron Gray, the author of Animal, excuse me, Ant Farm, <laughs> is uh, giving away the first four chapters. So you can just go there, antfarmbook.com. Again, it's antfarmbook.com. It'll explain all the liberty issues for folks. Adam Kokesh is back with us uh, from the Freedom Line, the freedomline.com, his, uh, his new website. And Adam, uh, you know, we always have to recap for our listeners that have never uh, tuned in to you before. Uh, they uh, need to know that you're an activist, you're a liberty minded uh, individual, a talk show host on uh, television, and uh, you actually stood up for gun rights in Washington, D.C. by toting a shotgun in. Was it uh, Freedom Plaza? Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So they uh, they did something that you didn't expect. They came after you at your house with uh, an armed troop, a bunch of troops and tanks and helicopters and raided your house. They uh, found some guns and drugs, charged you in Virginia with those, while in D.C. you were charged with some extra so-called crimes in addition to the uh, the toting of the gun. What happened with the D.C. situation? And then give us the latest on Virginia with the, the plea deals or the sentencing, rather, that happened this uh, this week. Sure. Well, I, after doing four months in jail, I had I was I was let out on pretrial uh, on four months trial. pretrial. Correct. What was that? That was four months pretrial. Correct. That right. wasn't that was, a sentence. That was being denied bail, which right. was highly unusual for a, a because case. you were supposedly this big threat, this this huge danger. Right. Even though you've not hurt anybody or been accused of that. Right. And it was there there are very few things that I find painfully offensive that really get under my skin. But the judge that first heard my bond case compared me to Adam Lanza, the shooter. Yeah. uh, The the Sandy Hook shooter. (laughs) Ridiculous. Basically, anybody with a gun is someone who's about to shoot up a school, especially, you know, a peaceful gun rights activist who, uh, you know, preaches self-defense. And that's I don't know if that was, uh, you know, something politically motivated uh, while we can we can tell that the whole thing was. And, and what was really cool about what happened in Virginia, which we'll get to, was that the judge was very, uh, very, very well acknowledging the fact that while there were eight people in the home and there were drugs found in different people's rooms, allegedly that of, of the eight, I was the only one that was arrested and charged with anything. Hmm. And in D.C., when I finally went up for my sentencing last January, I was sentenced to time served. They thought three and a half months was enough to send the appropriate message. And uh, I got two years. Right. Americans don't have guns. <laughs> yep. Right. And uh, so in Virginia, I was finally facing these last two charges and was. Uh, was what was it? Gut possession of uh, what were the exact charges in Virginia? Uh, drugs and drugs with guns. Okay. Possession charges. Again, victimless crimes. Felonies. Both felonies. Both felonies. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, again, was it, it mushrooms? Was, by the way, just curious. Yes, mushrooms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was it was one of those things where I'm I'm bullied into a corner, and uh, as much as I would have liked to take it to trial, uh, I'm I'm happier with this outcome, and I, I wanted to, I want to explain why in a second. Come okay. back to that and, and the bigger picture and sort of lessons learned and how. My own activism has changed course as a result of all of this, not from the experience, but from things that I kind of already knew to be true. But the judge in this case, at the last hearing, when I I entered Alford pleas, it was not that's when you don't admit guilt, but you say that I am accepting the charge because there is a preponderance of evidence. Basically, it's not worth fighting. Mm -hmm. And the judge wanted to not accept the pleas and was like, well, no, then we'll go to trial. You think you got a case? Then let's do this. And it was like, Kind of no, that's scary. kind of the point of the Alfred plea, right? Like, I don't think I have a case. <laughs> right, exactly. So we had to, uh, it was a very contested hearing the last time, and the, the judge was, you know, uh, seemed like she was about to take me back into custody, and that's what the prosecutor was asking for, and it was really, uh, really hairy and kind of intense. And then we came back to this one, and I was facing a, a hypothetical 15 years but we found out that uh, my sentencing guidelines were calculated at you know zero to three months, and the uh, pre-sentence report, the, the gentleman who filled that out, 
uh, recommended a, what they call a downward departure, and the judge ended up sentencing me to three months on each count suspended mm. uh, and no probation, which is pretty much the best outcome No possible. probation. Right. Well, this... Very unusual. Well, I'm already on probation in D.C., so it uh -huh. would have been just more of an administrative headache I see. than anything. But, but I, there was a... There, you know, one of the things I said after the the hearing to uh, to the reporter from the Washington Post who was there is that when you're in a situation like this, like what I was telling you, how I talked to all of the guards and other inmates when I was in jail, you know, that's the best part of an opportunity like this. You know, when you get arrested for civil disobedience, yeah, there's a there's a PR value and there's a value in making people think and challenging the law and inspiring other people to resist, but sometimes the best you get out of that is when you get to talk to the cop in the back of the squad car and be like, do you realize what you're doing, sir? Do you, do you really, can, can you examine the morality of what you're engaging and your role in this incredibly unjust system? And I had a feeling like the judge in doing her research on this case got a certain exposure to the message of freedom that she never would have had otherwise. And I can't help but think from her demeanor during the hearing yesterday that she had become kind of a fan and I, 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 I hope that's not— uh, You never know, man. You never know who yeah. you're going to touch with these ideas when you're out there spreading the, uh, the the message of freedom. I mean, I'll give you an example. Mark, you uh, had told me that you were uh, working out at the YMCA here in town one day, and this was uh, after we had uh, the radio station. We had a pirate radio station on here in Keene. Actually, there's another one uh, on right now, from what I understand. It's in its fourth iteration now. But uh, one of the previous iterations had just been shut off uh, recently. The FCC had come to town and started sniffing around, and uh, the operator had shut it down. And Judge Burke, who is the judge, basically, in uh, in Keene at the district court, he comes in, because he works out at the YMCA, apparently, and Mark, you'd seen him in there previously. Judge Burke came up to you and said something about, hey, what happened to the radio station? <laughs> right? <laughs> So he was listening. Obviously, he was a listener. If he, you know, wasn't a listener, he wouldn't have known it's about. Nice to that. have options. So you never know. You never know who's listening out there. So okay, sentenced to three months, suspended sentence, suspended for what? How long? How many years? Uh, well, I have to wait to see the paperwork. And for people that don't understand, it's basically like an implied probation. If I get in trouble again here, they can say your sentence is unsuspended and you go back and this is tacked on to whatever other punishment. That's true, need. but it's not as bad as probation. Uh, exactly. pro probation. No check in. Yeah, you don't have to check in, although, as you said, you're on probation in D.C. Now, you're not right. living in D.C., right? You're, you're in L.A. now. That's correct. And and I want to say I, I have a really big announcement coming up on uh, the 15th here as a result of knowing that I'm not going back to jail with some plans that I've been working on for a while now. Oh. But I, what I really want to talk to you guys about and, and share with your audience, who I know is uh, you know, mostly people who are not just on the fence but are, are really passionate about this, and there's something about— That's not true. We're on 160 radio stations uh, nationwide, and so I can't yeah, tell you there, what There are of thousands of people hate, listening right now, and they hate you. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm, I'm used to that feeling. But I would I'll, say that our internet audience, the people who you know make a point of seeking out our podcast, those are kind of more likely to be freedom activists or freedom interested people. But the the radio audience is anyone and everyone listening to talk radio tonight. So you've got a, right. a wide variety. Well, let me address them for a second first. If you don't believe in freedom, if if you're not already a, a fan of you know owning yourself and the non-aggression principle and respecting the rights of others stop listening right now we're gonna have a little we're gonna have a little inside movement pow wow a little strategy session you're not welcome to listen all right uh, i don't uh, adam kokesh does not speak for uh, the producers of free talk live <laughs> i think it's and... brilliant because you know every one of them is going to listen <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back with more right. here hey, in hey. moments Adam, you can hang on, so we're going to bring you back. And if you got a question for Adam Kokesh, he's here with us, and the toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. We'll find out what's going on with him now, coming up. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Breathe it in kid clean fresh air thanks to these new air handler filters they're more energy efficient hold more dust and are stronger than ever and granger's got over 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from just ordered a new batch from granger.com today i love oxygen kid and this facility's got some great ao2 i'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters get some today get it 
Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash air handler or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The Genesis Communications Network is one of America's premier broadcasters of captivating talk radio. We thank you for listening. Now, now, just imagine, there are thousands of people who are just as passionate about radio as you are. But what you may not realize is how easy and affordable it is to advertise with us. Radio commercials for your business could be heard on hundreds of radio stations across the U.S. every day. We can help you by creating an effective radio advertising campaign for your company. From script writing to producing your commercials. Just like the one you're listening to right now. No other network provides the level of customer service we do. When it comes to radio advertising, we are your one-stop shop. And no matter how big or small your business is, we can help. Email us at advertise at GCNlive.com. And an experienced advertising executive will help you take the first step towards driving more customers to your business or website. At the warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me about my job, my kid's education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 if you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Hey, that was a fast music bed. Well, that's because uh, something went wrong technically at the network side. Apologies, affiliates. <laughs> Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the site. Uh, we've got a bunch of great sponsors on Free Talk Live, including ModUp.net. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into Modafinil from ModUp.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from ModUp.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. At modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It is your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So check out modup.net, and when you're ready to order, use Bitcoin to get a 33% discount. And whether you're using Bitcoin or not, you can use code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, true. code FTL at modup.net. It's world-class service at a great price on Modafinil. Modup, M-O-D-U-P, dot net. We've got Adam Kokesh here. He is now the host of The Freedom Line. Previously, 
uh, the show was Adam versus the man. And uh, what was it, Adam, that uh, that inspired you to make that change? And, and when was it? It's fairly recent, correct? Yes. And first, I have to talk about the book that I started writing when I was in jail called Freedom. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that the last time you were on the show. Is that is that that it, what was a, down, a digital download previously? Is it available in, in print? Yes, we are taking orders at thefreedomline.com. Very excited about that now. And this is a book that I came up with while I was in jail. And I looked around and did a survey of the literature of our movement, which is very nice to be able to do as young as this movement is. And when I came up with this idea for the book, I was like, wait a second, no, nobody's written this yet? This, this dumbass, this guy that was, you know, like in, in solitary right now, the guy that had to go to Iraq to find out that the war was a bad idea, this guy gets the right... <laughs> This outreach tool, and I wrote it to be the ultimate outreach and conversion tool, and I'm confident in saying that we who helped make this happen succeeded in this, and there's nothing I'd rather hand somebody. Uh, and, and, and you guys know this, and this is why I'm excited to discuss it with, with you in particular as uh, you know, guys who are so committed to the cause of freedom, because for a long time I've been thinking that it, it really doesn't matter if we have a big audience or we get a lot of YouTube views, or we're right about something, or you make headlines for civil disobedience even, we're a tiny movement of people that really yes. understand the, the non-aggression principle, really understand the you know, self-ownership concept for what it is, who really understand freedom as a moral concept. It's less than 1% of the population. 1% would be 3.3 million. And I think it's you know, a little closer to 1 million. So we got a long ways to go. The most important thing that we can do is win converts, get people to fundamentally change the way they think by understanding this and understanding what freedom really means. And for those of you who, who aren't invited to this conversation right now because you're not on board yet, if you haven't considered the message, that might be the only reason you're not on board yet. And, and anybody who really understands it, who takes the time to understand what freedom is and why they want it for themselves, understands that it's more than just something you take for yourself. Well, most people do want it for themselves, right? That, that I think most people are clear on. They like the idea of being free for their own lives. It's those other people and what they'll do with their freedom. That's the problem. Yeah, but it's a yes. bold and radical stance to say that, A, human freedom's a bad idea. B, the, the, that those other people, whoever they are, do not own themselves. They are not free within themselves to make choices. They do not have human rights because that's what people— who don't believe in human freedom, people who do, who think libertarians are nuts. That's the position they take. Their position is, we, those the majority, are the state, and you will do what we say or we will come to your house and we'll put a bullet in your head. Yep. You'll come with us and go to a, a cage, but if you don't come with us, if you believe you're free, ultimately, that's what we do. You do what we say or we shoot you. Yep, and and that's the premise of government. And, and the reason a book like this is so important right now and, and why I was shocked when I figured out that this doesn't exist is that most people who don't uh, embrace freedom simply don't understand it. And a lot of it has been because of the way that we have presented this message. And a, a lot of people who, who go to the, the philosophically consistent message end up shying away from it and reaching out to people. And they compromise and they water the message down. And then you don't win anybody over. You might get yep. them to vote for a candidate or agree with you on an issue or support one particular prop, uh, program or whatever. But if you don't fundamentally change the way people think, you're going to lose them, and it really doesn't get us anywhere. So the reason this book is so important is that it's not Amerocentric. It's not judgmental. It's in short, easy-to-understand segments. It doesn't uh, talk about the American government. It talks about the modern phenomenon of, mo of, of bureaucratic democracies and, and other forms of government as we know them. It simply lays it out matter-of-fact. And there are a couple things that do make it unique that are, are of particular value to the individual reading it. Because as you know, a lot of people come into this movement, they wake up to the nature of government, and they get angry, mm -hmm. as they should be. And they get scared of, of things that they should be afraid of. And then they get depressed because, you know, it, it might seem hopeless. Yeah, it feels like you can't do anything about it. And then they go out into the community and say, now join me in my fear and my anger and my <laughs> depression. Isn't it amazing? And then everybody goes, screw you. Why would I want anything to do with that? Yeah, I'm going to go back to watch TV. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I know that you guys have gotten past that. And I think uh, it, it's been the best feedback I've got on the book so far is from people who already got the message and then read the section on emotional freedom and go, holy crap. 
I'm not angry anymore. Now I'm really yeah. ready to do this, Adam. Is that and what prefaced that your change uh, from Adam versus the man, the, the show name to the Freedom Line? Was it was it a dropping of anger? What was it that, that, that created that for you? Well, I think I dropped it a long time ago and was waiting for the mechanism to do it, and it really was this book. And the announcement that I've got coming up is going to be about promoting the book, but it's really all I care about now is getting people to read this, getting people to really consider the message, and winning people over to to the movement. All right, to Adam, Adam, freedom. let's but but let's be realistic here. We're in the new media age. Books are kind of uh, out of style to some extent. Some people don't like to read. Are you going to be doing an audiobook version? Does one already exist? The audiobook is already out and available for free at thefreedomline.com. So this is a right. multimedia approach yeah. here. So you can go and uh, grab the book in digital form for free. You can download yes. the audiobook for free at the freedom thefreedomline.com. Sounds like Adam just caught, caught by a mousetrap. And uh, you're still doing your TV thing, right? So you're also doing the Freedom Line show. Right. How often? Absolutely. Is that weekly? Uh, well, we're doing uh, the podcast is a weekly show, mm -hmm. and I, I try to do YouTube videos uh, most days of the week. But I, if about the book, like again, really being all I care about, what we're doing is trying to give away as many even paper copies for free. And if I have to personally hand one out to everyone in the country, then. That's what I'm going to try to you do. You are a man on a mission, and I appreciate that. Uh, I, I miss seeing you. I, I know that you were recently in Vermont, and uh, you were at a, a Freedom Festival up there. How'd that go? Oh, it was amazing. And it's uh, it's amazing to see that that uh, I, I think there's this greater awareness in the movement seek, seeping in. Uh, and, and it's really cool, as you guys know, to be on the right side of history and to feel the inevitability of people coming this way, of having the moral awakening that is the freedom movement. And, and I got a sense of this from the, uh, the, the, the deep feeling crowd that was there at the Freedom and Unity Festival. And thanks to Jessica Bernier for putting that together. But uh, there's there's a sort of sense that like we, we need to get past the, uh, you know, the, the libertarian. It's, and it's not that infighting is a bad thing. It, but that uh, making media for each other is unproductive. Mm. That you know, talking to fellow libertarians is not a way to grow the movement. I and, totally agree. That's yeah. why I, I wish yeah. more people uh, would get out there into public. And you know, an, an easy form of activism is to put a radio transmitter on the air. You could take mm -hmm. uh, LRN.FM's content, which includes your show, by the way. Actually, I need to get on the the, the, the program guide and update the show name. It still says Adam versus the Man. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I will do that. And uh, so it's, you know, you could put that show and all the other great shows we have on, and then put it on the radio, and then all kinds of people are going to uh, to tune into it. So that's one way to reach people without. If you're like a an introvert you don't actually have to talk to anyone you can let us do the work you know we'll talk on the air and then uh, other people can listen and of course uh sharing lots of introverts on the radio by the way no, no <laughs> doubt about it so the freedomline.com that's your new website i'm excited i'm glad to see it i always like to see uh, sh uh shows without the host's name in them because i just feel like <laughs> it's just too much about me and i feel like you're, yeah. you're shifting your focus to something Absolutely. that's more important Absolutely. And, and I want to say one other thing, gentlemen, that, that I think as long as as long as we're talking amongst just just ourselves, right, just, yep, just, just us here, just, just the freedom lovers in the audience now, uh, there's something that our movement has also been very deficient of in terms of connecting the message to the general public. For those of us who understand that nonviolent relations are better than violent coercive relationships as a matter of scientific principle, then you don't really need a how. You don't really need a, a how do we do this, how do we get there kind of roadmap. But for the people that are more practical minded, you really do. And Absolutely. It's an important part of the book and in incorporating technology and where we're going in the future. Adam, I know you're going to keep in touch with us. I always appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for spending the time with us tonight. Listeners should check out thefreedomline.com. Grab the free book, watch the show. You do great work, man. Keep it up out there. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, Adam. That's Adam Kokesh. We'll come back with more here on Free Talk Live. In fact, the liberty movement is under attack because the ideas are starting to stick, and we'll talk about that coming up. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. 
It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, September 6th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.22 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,269 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $485. Antiwar.com reports the Obama administration has made much of its attempts to assemble a new coalition of the willing for its latest war in Iraq and sought to claim a major victory on that front yesterday, announcing that it had organized a campaign including Great Britain, France, Australia, Canada, Germany, Turkey, Italy, Poland, and Denmark to fight against ISIS. Secretary of State John Kerry was pushing hard for backing for the coalition, dubbing ISIS an ambitious, avowed, genocidal, territorial-grabbing, caliphate-desiring quasi-state with an irregular army that had to be totally destroyed militarily. Yet, it's not clear at all what officials for those countries in the new coalition are actually signing on for, and Prime Minister David Cameron insisted no military requests have been made of any of the coalition members with respect to ISIS. Officials say that in addition to NATO members, the U.S. is hoping to cobble together a collection of Sunni Arab nations to join the war, a difficult task since the war is taking place mostly to save Shiite Arab nations like Syria and Iraq from further ISIS expansion. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to take Peace, Love, Liberty Radio on the road. During a 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty, while simultaneously continuing to create daily liberty media. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot fppradio.com. Reuters reports Ukraine and separatist rebels reached a ceasefire agreement on Friday, the first step towards ending fighting in eastern Ukraine that has caused the worst standoff between Moscow and the West since the Cold War ended. The ceasefire deal was struck in the Belarusian capital of Minsk, along with a deal allowing for prisoner exchanges, deliveries of humanitarian aid, and the withdrawal of heavy weapons after five months of a conflict that has killed more than 2,600 people. Despite some initial shelling, in the rebel stronghold of Donetsk after the truce began, the ceasefire appears to be holding. But many residents and combatants were skeptical that the ceasefire could last long or provide the basis for a durable peace settlement. The two sides remained far apart on the future of the region. Despite the deal, European Union ambassadors agreed to stronger sanctions against Russia over its involvement in the war in Ukraine, with the measures set to be implemented on Monday, according to diplomats in Brussels. The diplomats 
France said the EU sanctions, the latest economic measures aimed at Moscow over Ukraine, could be suspended if the truce holds and Russia withdraws its troops from Ukraine. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko said in a statement announcing the truce, human life is of the highest value. We must do everything possible and impossible to end the bloodshed and put an end to people's suffering. The Kremlin welcomed the agreement, based largely on proposals made by President Vladimir Putin and leaving the separatist in control of vast swaths of territory. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports, on the final day of its summit in Wells, NATO has approved creation of a rapid reaction force for eastern Ukraine, which officials described as the spearhead for any future fighting with Russia in the region. The approval sets up the permanent force of 4,000 troops in Eastern Europe in keeping with previous reports about what the proposal was expected to include. The spearhead force is just a fraction of the size of what Poland wanted for a permanent deployment, which was a minimum of 10,000 troops, but may not be the end of the ongoing NATO buildup in the region. The move is nominally a counter to a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine, though after months the invasion has not happened and the ongoing civil war in Eastern East Ukraine seems to be winding down with the new ceasefire. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. As Sao Paulo struggled to dig out after last week's devastating earthquake, I'm just praying. I'm just praying and helping. One group was left with no one to care for them. There is nowhere for these homeless dogs to go. There is no food to give them. There is no clean water. These dogs are going to starve to death. I have to do the humane thing. I have to put these dogs down. O'Brady Shaw is the only journalist compassionate enough to do what has to be done. Put down 50 or 60 dogs today. I didn't want to. Let me help you! But their fate would have been much worse if I hadn't have done it. It's better this way. O'Brady Shaw goes where other reporters won't and does the jobs other reporters can't. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Gut Check with O'Brady Shaw. Live from Sao Paulo, tomorrow night, only on the Onion News Network. Talk Live. We'll take your calls toll-free here about whatever you'd like to discuss. The live Saturday edition with you tonight. It's Ian here. And Mark. Hey, don't forget, you can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. We'll, of course, take your calls about anything you want. Spent the first hour of the show with Adam Kokesh. If you missed it, of course, you can download it later at freetalklive.com. Last night, I teased, and it wasn't my intention to tease this and not pay it off, uh, the Salon article, which is actually originally from Alternet.org. Let me mute that. Uh, from Alternet.org, where they are saying they have seven of what they call the strangest libertarian ideas, including that parents should be allowed to let their children starve to death. That is what they claim is a libertarian idea. And I would like to uh, address that here in a moment. But first, we're going to go to Skype, where Jimmy is in Arizona. Jimmy, go ahead. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, Jimmy, go ahead with your thoughts. I remember y'all hear about that new zombie? They got on that uh, Walking Dead show. I, you no. know, I know nothing about the Walking Dead show. I hear it's really great. I know about the Walking Dead show. I'm actually uh, caught up. I've watched all of the episodes, uh, but I don't know anything about a new zombie. For our listeners who aren't aware, the Walking Dead is a television series, a drama. Uh, that is set in a you know post zombie America where they're you know most everybody's dead. You can't really do anything without zombies in the last five years. Most everybody in America is dead, and there's you know obviously a group of uh, people who are trying to survive, and they get picked off one by one over time, and so that's pretty much the show. So what about it? Well, it uh, it walks around, it it steals your money, uh, takes your land, 
Uh, I think they're they called them uh, progressives. <laughs> well, now hold on a second. I mean, conservatives do all that stuff too, right? I guess so. Maybe that's the next new zombie. <laughs> hey, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to my taxidermist. <laughs> You've got a taxidermist? I mean, how many people use taxidermy these days? I guess it's still. A kind you know, of- oh, man. there's a trend where people are taking their pets and turning them into pillows. So, wow. yeah, if you have a beloved That's cat weird. or whatever, you can uh, take its pelt and... You know, I mean, because really, when it comes God. to taxidermy, that's all that's left anyway, right? Like, you don't have the the inside bits of your animal. It's it's your animal yeah. on some kind of uh, you know frame. So you just take the pelt, you turn it into a pillow, and then you can pet Fluffy for that's weird man. the rest of your life. I mean, we've got the Studio Beast here, uh, and I love her very very much. My uh, my Jazzy, the Studio Beast, but I don't think I'd want to have a lifeless Jazzy around. I think that would just be bizarre but hey whatever floats your boat what are you using a taxidermist for jimmy well my taxidermist he took a a white-tailed deer that i got beautiful beautiful deer uh he cut it in half so uh in my living room the front of it's hanging out you know just the head and the two front legs and in my room is uh the butt end of it (laughs) you know i and but they he he's a talented talented taxidermist the front uh, when you walk in, the deer head, it's animated, and it sings, uh, you know, that Beastie Boys song, You Gotta Fight for Your Right, you know? <laughs> but so what else awesome. would you have it sing? Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, and the end of it, you, like, you pull the tail, and Hershey Kisses come out the butt. <laughs> it's Thanks it's for beautiful. the call, Jimmy. I appreciate it. Toll free number. <laughs> I'm just glad the tail end doesn't sing Barry White. That's all I've got about. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. So, Mark, you're a libertarian kind of guy. Do you think parents should be allowed to let their children starve to death? That's what Salon.com and Alternet are claiming that libertarians believe, or at least some. They they do make the statement in the introduction to this seven points they have, the seven what they call strangest libertarian ideas. They do make it clear. They say, obviously, not every self-proclaimed libertarian believes these ideas, but they say libertarianism is a space which nurtures them. Mark, are you on board with that one? Should I am not, like- but I would claim that anybody who is both libertarian and pro-choice should be. As a matter of fact, I think anybody who's pro-choice should be. Hold on. You're saying anyone who's pro-choice or libertarian should be in favor of allowing parents to let their children starve to death? I'm afraid that that, to me, sounds like the same thing. What do you mean by that? Well, if you can, uh, you know, I believe that life starts at conception. And so, therefore, if you can kill uh, your child in the womb, you should be able to kill your child out of the womb. You're not, you're not being serious. About I that. am. You are being no, serious. No, no. I I believe that abortion is the ending. Uh, this is really what the conversation's about. And I don't know why you uh, would want to talk about Murray Rothbard's theory on uh, parents being able to starve their children to death in front of me. You really should have talked about this on a Friday night. When I don't know what you're getting at, but go ahead. Other folks were around who were pro-choice. But um, no, I think that uh, that's what Murray Rothbard's saying. He's saying— Well, we haven't quoted Murray Rothbard yet. Would you like you me to asked quote me, Murray Rothbard? I was only asking you if you supported parents being allowed to let their children starve yes, to death. But I've read these books, Ian. So you asked me a question, and the answer I have to say is no. I believe that uh, the creation of a child is a tort. Um, you have put a person, an individual, in a, in a situation of helplessness, mm-hmm. and therefore you have an obligation. What is that obligation? I think that obligation is to provide a modicum of care at the very minimum – to get them to a situation where someone else can care for them. That seems totally reasonable to me. Um, so let me get into this here from Salon.com. Number one on their list of seven strangers, what they call libertarian ideas, parents should be allowed to let their children starve to death. They say, we're not making this up. From progressive writer Matt Brenning comes this excerpt from libertarian economist Murray Rothbard. Quote, a parent does not have the right to aggress against his children, but also should not have a legal obligation to feed, clothe, or educate his children, since such obligations would entail positive acts coerced upon the parent and depriving the parent of his rights. The parent, therefore, uh, therefore, may not murder or mutilate his child, and the law properly outlaws a parent from doing so. But the parent should, claims Rothbard, have the legal right not to feed the child, i.e. to allow it to die. This, to me, 
uh, is a terrible excerpt. I don't know from what it, uh, it is excerpted. I would have to look it up. It might it might be for a new liberty. But I think that uh, it's libertarian statements like this, which for lack of a better term, I'll just call a libertarian macho flash, Okay. I think are uh, very detrimental to the movement in general. I mean, this, this sounds a, monstrous. It, it does me. sound monstrous, but it is not by any means uh, relegated simply to the libertarian movement. This is relegated to the pro-choice movement. The, I mean, really, Ian, consider for a moment— if you can kill a child that is, you know, eight months, uh, uh, you know, a baby in the womb at eight months, and this is what they call these late-term abortions. Okay. okay, you can call it what you want. Yeah, you can call it whatever you want, too. Uh, they survive at eight months. You could cut that child out, mm -hmm. give it to someone else, and it would survive. So I think that a parent has an obligation to do that in that situa situation, I think that's why it's outlawed in many places around the world. But then, you know, what's the difference between that that child passing through, uh, you know, a vagina, and then being put in somebody's arms, and then, the, uh, you know, th then killing it? I think the difference is that once something is outside of the womb, it's, it looks uh, different. You can't starve a child in the womb unless the mom starves herself at the same time. So you can't really do the same thing in that circumstance. Um, with the case of what Murray Rothbard is saying here, it makes it sense. It's people like this. That make the libertarian movement sound callous and in, and just really awful. I and disagree entirely. This is not a libertarian statement that Rothbard's but making. Murray Rothbard is known as a, a, the as libertarian. a libertarian. I don't know if he's the libertarian, but he's known as a libertarian. He's a published libertarian. He's yeah. an influential libertarian Was, on a, yeah. a lot of people. And I think that uh, I think the most people would not agree with this particular statement. Even most people in the liberty movement, that most it's people not don't okay. take the radical pro-choice uh, stance. That's true. But there are people, many people. I don't see why you keep scholars, bringing this to pro-choice. We're that's talking what it's about, about letting a child die outside of a womb. We're talking about a child, a baby letting it just starve to death, and I, that's not okay. And I don't think most libertarians, even the supermajority of them, would agree with that, regardless of what their position is on abortion. I'd like right, to just put that aside this. for okay, a moment. Okay, put, put it aside for a second. Let me ask you this question. You uh, you have to do you things. You haven't even let me make a point. my point on this, so we'll come back with more here in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I think it is uh, statements like this, written in, the, in this sort of... Well, that's outrageous sort of fashion, this bombastic uh, method of writing. I don't think it communicates the idea. Whatever idea he's trying to communicate is not communicated very effectively here if you're talking about letting babies die of starvation. I think libertarians need to find some compassion when they talk to people. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938.
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here toll free at 855 450 free. Some misunderstandings, some miscommunications about the liberty movement on both sides, uh, the sides, uh, the side of the people within the movement and the people without, the people who are looking at the movement and criticizing it, and I think in some cases for good reason, because some of the people in the movement, even the, uh, the respected authors like Murray Rothbard, aren't necessarily the best people at communicating these ideas. Uh, I'm not saying I'm the best person. I've got all kinds of issues. I need to, you know, everybody's got things they can work on. Uh, and one of the biggest problems with the liberty movement is the libertarian macho flash, which is making a statement that uh, is as radical sounding as it can possibly be and not really caring about what people think about it, not, not really caring about how it's interpreted, just trying to sound as principled and as badass as you possibly can. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE if you'd like to join the conversation. You can also take us any direction you want with any topic. That is why we call it Free Talk Live. And we will help you get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You get signed up for their auto-ship program, and you get a pound of coffee for free just for paying the shipping cost. Obviously, you got to pay for shipping. Uh, but the pound itself will cost you nothing. And it's 100% organic, shade-grown, and top 1% grade Arabica coffee. This is great coffee, and it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees. But at BuzzBox Coffee... We've teamed up with them to do something that's different from what those other fancy coffee suppliers will do. We're using some of the profits from the co uh, the coffee to actually fund micro loans around the world. Yeah. And we're going to be teaming up with Kiva.org. Uh, we were doing World Vision. Uh, that program's coming to an end. So we're moving to Kiva. I think a lot of our listeners are going to be happier with Kiva because it's not – like I guess World Vision kind of had a religious overtone to it. And some of our, our listeners were uncomfortable with that. So now you can feel more comfortable because Kiva is probably the most noteworthy, uh, at least the one that I know about, uh, of all of the microloan companies out there. So very excited to help uh, fund people, making a better life for themselves, improve their businesses, start businesses in third world countries all around the world. And you can help that happen 
by getting coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. A portion of each purchase is going to go into that fund to fund microloans. Did I get that right, Mark? That's correct. Perfect. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You just pay the shipping cost to get that first pound for free, and you can cancel your subscription at any time. Plus, you can adjust the the uh, the frequency of the delivery, the amount of the delivery. So you know, if you need a pound every four weeks or a pound every two weeks or whatever your your frequency of uh, consumption of coffee. They can customize it for you at coffee.freetalklive.com. As we continue here, there's a disturbing quote cited in a Salon.com article here, and we're going to get to your calls here in a moment, uh, just to kind of recap, where Murray Rothbard, who is uh, has now passed away, was saying that he believes essentially that a parent was should... Was it 1998? When he died, I don't know. I think so. But a parent should have the legal right to not feed their child, i.e. to allow it to die... Uh, the Salon article. Goes, I don't think Murray Rothbard would have said that it was a legal right at all. Uh, this is an alleged quote from him here from some book that he wrote. Does he use the term "legal"? The parent should have the legal right not to feed the child, i.e., right. to allow it to die. And I think that it's statements like hard that, to believe somebody who called themselves an anarchist would claim that somebody had a legal right. These callous statements are some of the the. the the worst part about this movement. Look, I get it. You know, freedom, it works. It's a great idea. But if you're not prepared to communicate the ideas with compassion to people, I don't think you should bother. I really don't think you should. Rothbard was an academic and uh, that it it has sort of a different. I don't care what the excuse is for why he writes this way. It's a terrible writing in some cases, not writing books to convince people but to convince academics Mm -hmm. and so here i would ask you this point now we don't academics have emotions and feelings too yeah but they're not supposed to be using them when they ridiculous when when, okay so let me ask you this what's the obligation that a parent has to feed another human being i think there's a A person has social and a moral obligation a social obligation how did that social obligation get created uh through peer pressure Okay, that's not an obligation. <laughs> All right. Well, it is an obligation if somebody else comes along and says, hey, uh, you're not feeding your child. I'll be taking that from you and then takes yep. your child from you. And then you want to try to get it back in court. You you're going to fail. You wouldn't have that ability if you had uh, failed as a parent at that point. Like a parent and hopefully a parent that chooses not to feed their child wouldn't be coming after somebody who took it away to give it a better life. Well, I would hope not, too. So I think that there's, uh, you know, there's pressure. The, the reason why people behave in certain ways, you know, you wear clothes outside. Yeah, but that's not an obligation. Because Social pressure isn't an obligation. Okay, if you're asking me if there's a legal obligation, then I'm not no, asking no you about a legal a obligation. I don't believe in legal obligations. Okay. Um, I believe, I don't believe what that people- What are you asking then? I'm asking how the obligation was created. Well, you just said you don't believe in a legal obligation. Well, legal obligations means that a bunch of liars have gotten together Mm -hmm. in some city they call a capital and wrote written stuff down on a piece of paper, right? I think it's like I said, it's uh, you. You can say that there's no social obligation. That's fine. Uh, There's not, but I think that somebody else could come in and step in. I'm not claiming there's not. I'm not claiming there's an obligation. Please understand me. I believe that a tort was created. Mm -hmm. That the two parents got together. They created a person who is in a situation that they cannot take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Any other time. You put somebody in a situation they can't take care of themselves. You have an obligation to make them whole. In this case, when you create a life, you have the obligation to bring that person to personhood. Now, I That's think personhood because of what a- other people think about it, and because of a moral code, right? That's not because you have an obligation legally. Well, torts, or because torts. you've signed a contract. Torts are about, uh, you know, harming somebody. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, that's what it is. That's what it means. Yes. And uh, you put, you know, that there's some similarities between creating a life and putting somebody in a situation where they can't Mm -hmm. uh, care for themselves. I believe there is an obligation. I'm asking you, since you don't believe that. How the obligation was created. What, what makes you? Why are you putting words in my in my mouth? I just told you. I think it's a social and a moral obligation put on people by by society. And society is a group of people who are in you know together for a common purpose. If you were living in a society where people just hated babies and all of them wanted to torture babies, so there's an obligation. Then it wouldn't matter. Then it so wouldn't matter. So there is an obligation. That's when, what I'm telling you. When was the obligation created? 
There is no it's a, it's not an obligation like something that was written down on a piece of paper. So there's no, no, no date stamped on it. I, Mark. I don't mean that. I'm not claiming that. I'm not claiming that there is. It was something that was created when? over time. Uh, wh- over time. Yeah, through interactions of human beings deciding no, no. what they thought was appropriate the as far as behavior. With, the individual case with the individual baby. At what moment did one become obligated to care for a child? Um, let's see. At what moment? That's a great question. I would say probably uh, as soon as it comes out. So you don't have a you don't have any obligation to care for a child. No, because prior you could shoot, you could put a gun to your head and kill yourself if you were a female, and obviously that would uh, you know eliminate any obligation you might have to care for the fetus that's inside you. You could also drink poisons, or you could do things to harm your body that would harm by proxy the part of your body that is growing us into a separate person, but is not yet in point of fact a separate person. Yeah, I suppose you could do that, but I think that you're harming somebody else when you do that. Yeah, and there's an argument to be made there uh, that the person who's inside you could perhaps have a tort against you if you, let's say, oh, I don't know, drank heavily during the uh, the pregnancy. Fetal alcohol syndrome is a reality. Yeah. But does any has anybody ever actually won a case like that? I don't know if, uh, uh, if I would the bet case. they have, but uh, I couldn't, you know. I- Oh, that's claim. pure speculation. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Attention all listeners. Are you ready for a free stock market webinar with PhilzGang.com? Join us September 13th to 12 noon Eastern for this live PhilzGang.com free webinar valued at $75. You'll learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To register, simply go to LearnStocksForFree.com. LearnStocksForFree.com. Or call 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. 
I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.LRN.FM. That's Facebook.LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Bring up anything here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, we're going to be going to Florida, Mark, going to Disney World. Disney World, that's right. Uh, Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. There's a Bitcoin party going on. It's coinsinthekingdom.com, and it should be a lot of fun. Lots of Bitcoin luminaries. Now, if you've heard about Bitcoin a little bit, and you're in the Orlando area, or you'd like to take a you know break and head off to Walt Disney World, this is a great opportunity to do it. This will be October the 4th through the 6th. Tickets are just 60 bucks to go to the event. Now, of course, you, you'll have to pay for hotel. That's about $100. Bucks. Um, of course, Walt, Walt Disney World is what Walt Disney World is, and I'm not sure. But kids are uh, under 12 are free at this event. There's going to be several Bitcoin luminaries there, people that are going to explain what it is to you if that's what you need to know. And if you're um, you know, involved in the Bitcoin community, lots of advanced stuff too. Uh, Dan Eltzer from uh, the MIT Bitcoin Project is going to be there. Charlie Shrim, now uh, newly uh, free uh, some ex- to some extent, will be there, hopefully. Sentenced. Yeah. Um, Kyle Drake, the creator of the Skyhook machine. Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me. Jason King from Sean's Outpost. Pamela Morgan from Empowered Law. Should be great. The Cryptocurrency College Network and the Chamber of Digital Commerce will be there, too. Just go to coinsinthekingdom.com. It's coinsinthekingdom.com. Dot com. Let's continue here. We'll go to your calls and thoughts. We've been talking, in this case, about Salon's list, and actually it's Alternate's original list, of the what they call the seven strangest libertarian ideas. And one of them is that Murray Rothbard claimed that parents should have the legal right to not feed their children, which I think is it's a horrible statement to make and is not couched in any compassion whatsoever in any explanation. We'll come back with, uh, with more of this story here. But first, let's go to Dana in Grand Rapids, listening to WTKG. Hello, Dana. Hi. Guys, I have two things to say. Um, one, the second one is to Mark. Um, the uh, first one, and I've talked to you guys before, just as recent as a couple weeks ago, and uh, I've told you I'm a conservative, and I think conservatives most more, if, if you were to comp- compare tit for tat, which doesn't really matter, but they more align themselves. They're very similar to libertarians. Maybe a I little disagree. different on some social Oh, I know. I Who think at a that? state level, yeah. I think at a state level, they tend to, on a national level, um, when it comes to the the war issue, that it can be a really, really contentious issue. No, no, you're. Uh, please don't con- confuse conservatives with. Um, and I don't disagree entirely with that, but we're not Republicans. They're different because the Republicans are more like you know the Democrats, and the Democrats aren't and are really progressives now because liberal is supposedly a dirty word, and they didn't want to, especially after the 2010 elections, um, did not want to be called liberal, so they had to come up with a new name. Uh, the uh, Republicans are not coming up with a new name. Uh, we're not rebranding ourselves. We really disagree with what the Republicans are doing. That's exactly why. And I'm not a member, and I don't know a lot about the Tea Party, but that's why the Tea Party started. It wasn't anti-Obama, anti-black or anti-Democrat or liberal. It was anti-Republican and all the big spending George Bush had. I'd agree with that. that I have to. I, okay. And I have to. But they, they malign that Tea Party to death. People don't even know the history. If you hate them, hate them for the right reasons. Don't make stuff up. Okay, that being said, I have two things to say, and like I said, the second is to Mark. First of all, 
brace yourself because you guys are libertarians, and I do agree with a lot of what you say. That's why I listen to you regularly. And if it's Saturday night and I'm single and I could be doing a lot of other things, but I make sure I'm listening to you from 7 to 9 Thank on Saturday you. night. So, you are what they call in radio an appointment welcome. listener. I love you guys. Welcome. But Go ahead. I don't agree with everything you say, okay. but I want you to brace yourself and everyone listen. I'm bracing right now. This is what the progressives do. Salon is so left, you can barely see them. They're that far off the planet. Uh, they, well, this is what they do. They either, if you're talking to them, they talk over you or they um, um, make false, uh, or I'm sorry, they talk over you, they change the subject, they refuse to answer, or they mock you. And if they cannot get you on those things, they will just bold face malign you in print well in this case they're just using the the words of a libertarian i mean they're just they're quoting a a libertarian but they're i wouldn't say they're doing any of the things you're suggesting in this at least in this paragraph of this article and i'm not i'm not i'm not calling about this guy saying he said it or didn't obviously it came from his book but notice how they pick certain things and take things sometimes out of context to because remember honestly the dana thing, i i get what you're saying but i i don't think that the okay. conservatives are any uh less indicted on this i mean they all sort of use the same tactics against one another there's all kinds of lying and misinformation uh, all don't, over the place no, and i'm not saying conservatives are false, flawless i never right. said that but not to the extent the, okay. the get, let, hit me with so your second vicious. point the one for but, mark go ahead okay, yeah. the second point is but also, I wanted to say one last sentence about the first point, an old saying. If you tell a lie and it's big enough and you say it enough times, it becomes the truth. People start believing it. Maybe not your listeners. All right. But Second point. Type of listener. Second point, Mark, I have an unbelievable whole newfound respect for you. I, too, believe that um, uh, whether you're um, – whether you're a late-term abortion or early, it's taking a life. And I want to say one thing on this, and this I feel very strongly on. Nobody, nobody, not you, Mark, not Ian, not me, not anyone listening, knows when a soul is breathed into that in, into that. Thanks, baby. Dana, for the call oh, tonight. Yeah. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, you know, this. Uh, there's actually an interesting extension of this conversation that goes on here in the Salon piece, and we'll get to that here in a moment, but it, it asks the question, and I think it's an interesting uh, follow-up, as to what if your baby isn't healthy? What if the baby that comes out is a mess, like physically mm. a mess, health-wise, you know, terminal illness, horrible disfigurement. Right, and this is like a really interesting point because, uh, you know, for instance, what, what Rothbard claims here is that a parent does not have an obligation to take care of a child, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this is interesting. Now, I'm not, I do not, be, I don't necessarily believe this, but let's go on with it for a second. Let's say that uh, now consider that morality is static. Consider possibly that morality has been – it's the same 10,000 years ago for hunter-gatherers as it is today. As a matter of fact, there are hunter-gatherers that exist right now. So if you're a hunter-gatherer woman and you live on the edge of starvation, you live on the edge of dying, you know, life, uh, life expectancy is 22 for your little band of um, – years old for your little band of troopers, whoever you guys are. Do you have a moral obligation to take care of a child who, for instance, is born with no arms and no legs? Mm-hmm. And How much money does that cost, whether you're in a hunter-gatherer or in our society? I don't. It, it, hunter-gatherers don't have money, so what it costs them is a great deal of time, time and effort, that, yeah. that comes away from their other children, right. that comes away from their spouse, that comes away from their family unit. We can expand on that in a moment. Let's go to Carl listening in Atlantic City to WPG. Hey, Carl. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Go ahead. What I want to talk about is I looked it up, Hillary Clinton's book. It's called Hard Choices, and I wanted to know how well it did because I haven't in a long time heard anything about it. Well, uh, well we I are talk is, show hosts, but that doesn't mean we actually know everything. So I, I think he looked it up, though. He I knows. Didn't. Oh, I thought you were asking I us. Did. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, well, I, I heard she got a $14 million advance for the book, and she sold even e-book copies Around two hundred thousand. That's, That's not all. very much. It doesn't sound great. No, the, but I know no, somebody who read it. Oh, okay. 
the publisher, they say, lost $10 million. Now, the book's about her accomplishments as uh, Secretary of State. Could you name me just one accomplishment? Uh, didn't she preside over the murder of all kinds of innocent people? I mean, that's not an accomplishment, but I guess from the no. uh, from the perspective of what governments do, I mean, she was right there along with all the other Secretary of States yeah. uh, presiding over her bloody murder. Thank you, Carl, for the call tonight. Toll-free number. I mean, she's no different than any other bureaucrat that happened to inhabit that position. 855 450 free. It's just that most people can name her. You're talking about war. When name you say the murder. other Secretary of State prior to her. Was it Rumsfeld? I don't even know. More coming up. It's I, Free Talk Live. I try Live. not to remember these politicians' 855, names. 855 450 free. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555 501 Two. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day -day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live, and you may take control of the airwaves here. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Perhaps you enjoy Free Talk Live, and you would like to support what we're doing, because you don't have to agree with everything we say to appreciate the fact that we're bringing the ideas of freedom to over 160 stations, uh, radio stations coast to coast, online, of course, via downloadable archives, live streaming, via satellite, uh, internationally to Central and Northern America, as well as Africa. Uh, We're available in a lot of different ways, and so people can get the ideas of freedom into their ears. And if you appreciate what we're doing here, then please become a Free Talk Live amplifier by joining the AMP program. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. You can go to amp.freetalklive.com to get signed up there with any major credit card, uh, through Visa, uh, through uh, PayPal, or you can use Visa or MasterCard right there on our website. So go to amp.freetalklive.com, and you'll get perks. You'll get like access to the uh, the Amp Only forum, the Amp Only podcast, which doesn't have the regular commercials our normal podcast does. And then also there's the brand newish Amp Only Facebook group, which has been, I think, a really welcome addition. It's uh, brought amplifiers together to kind of collaborate and on communicate Facebook. on Facebook. And it's uh, yeah, like Facebook or not, I don't really, I wish I didn't have to be on Facebook, but eh, the AMP program or the AMP forum is actually one of the better places uh, that I've been to on Facebook. So you can go and become an amplifier for as little as five bucks a month over at amp.freetalklive.com. We have a story here, which is uh, from alternateandsalon.com. Uh, article is written by Richard Esco, and he is criticizing libertarians, as has been seen quite a bit at Salon. And I was suggesting last night that that might be because the liberty movement is kind of gaining a little bit of steam. They're scared. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you don't you don't get attacked unless you're over the targets, uh, as they say. And the number one claim here of the what they say is the seven strangest libertarian ideas is that Murray Rothbard, who is a libertarian thinker uh, who passed away a couple decades Big ago. Big time. I mean, like, you know. Important. They say that he he's the quoted here is saying that the parent should have the legal right to not feed the child, i.e. to allow it to die. Let me go on with the comments here and we'll get back into your calls and thoughts. Uh, so the article author ends Rothbard's first quote and then he says, adds in, note the repetitive use of the word it to describe the child. This linguistic dehumanization of helpless individuals is surprisingly common in libertarian literature. Uh, Rothbard is a member of the so-called Austrian School of Economics, confounded or co-founded rather the Ludwig von Mises Institute, and is widely admired among libertarians. He continues another quote uh, from Rothbard: "The law, therefore, may not properly compel the parent to feed a child or to keep it alive. Again, whether or not a parent has a moral rather than a legally enforceable obligation to keep his child alive is a completely separate question." I thought it. I- when we're referring to a child, oftentimes I've felt like, okay, so like we've got a young child. Uh, my uh, son is six. And many times when you're dealing with uh, literature that, uh, you know, advice for parents, it'll try, attempt to put a pronoun in place of the child. And it'll say he or she. Mm-hmm. And, and it oftentimes. It's well, yeah, it's it is. Clunky. It's very clunky because, uh, you know, if you just use he, then. Uh, you know, the, the newly burgeoning uh, women's movement, uh, you know, the, the feminists out there tend mm-hmm. to get a little upset. You know, you just uh, you use the masculine pronoun. Now, I I disagree with that. I was taught um, that in our school, a woman in, in English said, you know, the way she looked at it was that uh, men had to share their pronoun where women had one that was dedicated directly to them. So, in fact, that it favored women as opposed to uh, otherwise. But anyway, um, so you'll if, if somebody uses, for instance, the she in referring to your child, you, know, you shouldn't leave your child in the car because she may be, um, you know, become warm. Well, I'm confused because I have a male child and I don't have a female child. So when you use the female she in there, you can use he, she, often uh, he or she. I use uh, I, I use the S slash H E when I write. Well, I suppose he could continue to refer to the child, but then that gets repetitive, right? right. So instead of so saying it uh, is, in my opinion, in this circumstance, 
fine, okay. not necessarily dehumanizing. I think, it's a, I think it's the weakest critique in this particular yeah. paragraph. But I would also point out that there are plenty of progressive thinkers that think similar things about children. So he goes on, Rothbard goes on to say, this rule allows us to solve such vexing questions as, should a parent have the right to allow a deformed baby to die, i.e. by not feeding it? The answer is, of course, yes, following a fortor fortiori from the larger right to this is why I don't read academic books uh, from the larger right to allow any baby whether deformed or not to die though as we shall see he claims in a libertarian society the existence of a free baby market will bring such neglect down to a minimum so uh, I would on. agree that that is also the case if you could uh, sell your child to someone who wanted well, is it willing more. to take care of it yeah I do don't think that I have a problem i'm not claiming that i think it should be illegal but you know i don't really want to promote the having of children so that you can sell them mm. i just have a problem with that i just don't like it right so uh going back to this question of should i do I think that kids that would be purchased would likely be i mean essentially what's the difference between purchasing a child and adopting them when you can give a uh, an expect uh, you know an expectant mother a scholarship today uh, you know, what's this scholarship mean? They can use it on so many things. This is purchasing a baby. So I like the idea that somebody should be able to give away uh, their child to someone who would be better or more interested in taking care of it. And I think that could uh, also apply to a deformed child as well. Because I think bringing up the question of what about this deformed or sick baby or, you know, something that's really, it just comes out all wrong, you know. And every now and then that'll happen. Uh, happens. What, what do you do about that? Is the mother obligated to take care of something that she can't even afford to take care of, let alone have the time to take care of, because that's a very expensive process. And I think that the question of what to do about a deformed baby really brings this down to the, the real issue here, and that is, what are people's values? And uh, in the case of children, they're different, obviously, right? You and I, yep. Mark, have different beliefs about when life begins, what that means, is it a baby, is it a fetus, things like that. Just right here in this room, we've got some very different ideas. Um, but bringing the question to a baby like a you know a deformed, crippled, really messed up, sick baby that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to kind of keep alive brings the question down to, is this about some sort of uh, – the, the people that are listening to this or considering these ideas, is this – the question, is it really about the person's dedication to the idea that life is so precious that no matter – what the circumstances that it should be protected because there's a solid argument to say that even if you can get this sick cripple baby through its first few years that it's not going to have a particularly satisfying life after that so is it wrong to put it like you know like for instance my dog gets sick she's kind of old if she gets really sick a lot of dog owners will make the choice of putting the dog down that's and it's a humane. really tough decision yeah it's not easy to do these are your best friends right uh the, it's but it's also a humane it's arguably a humane thing to do the dog shouldn't be in pain the dog shouldn't be coughing up black bile on a daily basis this is not a good life right <laughs> so uh you know you put the dog out of its misery you either let owners case. decide uh, when the best time to put their animal to sleep is or you don't let owners make that decision yeah and you and, and you probably if you don't let owners make that decision you probably don't want to call them owners either but it brings to, to the question is it wrong to do the same thing with a baby that is obviously you know sick deformed or whatever is going to is already having a tough time and is likely going to have a more tough time as as time goes on and the body gets larger and all of that so is it wrong is this all about protecting life is life worth protecting at any cost if that life is arguably not going to be very great. Now, you could also argue that some sort of medical advancement will come along and that, you know, within the next few years, all of these maladies that the child will have will be fixed via some sort of medical miracle. That sounds like a miracle. You could you could make that argument that that uh, that, that could yeah, happen. Yeah, my cousin has a child uh, that, you know, has a lot of challenges. And it's really, really difficult. She can't take care of her on her own. She has to get state help to do it. Right. Um, and so, again, is... It would obviously be okay to put that uh, that child out there and say, "Hey, look, I can't take care of this this child. This is I, mean, I was hoping for a healthy. Who's going to do this that? Who's? I mean, it's hard enough to get healthy children here in the United States 
that aren't well, babies. Well, there may be people who are interested. Like, you know, the Shriners take care of people with burns. I know, but uh, who's going to? It's hard to say. Right. I'm not saying that there would be a line of people waiting for it, but there may be somebody who would say, look, life is so important to me that I'm willing to spend my life and all of my income and try to raise more money because it's really expensive. I'm willing to spend my life dedicating it to taking care of these crippled, sick, dying sort of babies. If somebody wants to step in and do that, they should be able to do that. But otherwise, shouldn't the parents be able to make the choice to say, wow, this is way more than we expected to take on. We don't believe that this child is going to have a good life and we want to create a good life for our kids. Shouldn't they be able to make the choice to put the baby to sleep in that oh, case? God. What do you think? 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. I'd Hour say three no. is next. At the Home Depot, buy one or more pallets of GAF Royal Sovereign three-tab shingles and save up to 20%. Let's raise the roof but lower the cost with bulk pricing on GAF, America's number one shingle, featuring advanced protection technology. This is worth shouting from the rooftops. Let's do this. Up to 20% off one or more pallets of select GAF shingles. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Valid through September 17th, U.S. only. See store for details. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, September 5th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,265, silver opened at $19.10, and Bitcoin is trading around $484.38. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillfordTexas.com. This political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news today, on Thursday, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder announced the federal government is launching a second investigation into the Ferguson, Missouri Police Department. The focus will be on who the officers stop and search, how suspects are treated in jail, and the department's officer training. The investigation will be handled by the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division, the news comes after weeks of protests following the police shooting of 18-year-old Michael Brown. Jacob Lavoro, the 19-year-old man arrested in Williamson County, Texas, for possessing and selling pot brownies, received his trial date this week. Lavoro was originally facing life in prison, but the first-degree felony charges associated with his case were dropped, quite possibly due to the massive outcry from local and national activists and supporters. Justin Armand, executive director of Texans for Accountable Government, is one such supporter, he was present during the court proceedings and told the Liberty Bean that Jacob needs public support as he still faces charges that could carry up to 20 years in prison. Justin called Lavaro a peaceful young man who would be considered an entrepreneur in Colorado. 
Lavaro's court date has been set for December 1st, with a pretrial date set for November 12th at 1.30. At the pretrial hearing, Lavaro's attorney will present a motion to suppress certain evidence on the grounds that police entered his home illegally. The Liberty Beat will keep you up to date as this story unfolds. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus received support from the City Council Public Safety Committee this week when he presented a proposal, first revealed by News Radio WOAI, to ticket motorists who give money to street corner panhandlers. McManus told the committee there are alternative ways to give, as money given on the street, quote, goes for drugs and goes for alcohol. McManus said he would make a formal presentation on his plan next month. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And the Liberty Beat is brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 5th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. And like us on Facebook, Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. Several media outlets have reported on 11 planes allegedly missing from a Libyan airport and the possibility that the planes could be used for a terror attack. The Washington Free Beacon, Al Jazeera Television, and USA Today have reported that intelligence agencies believe the jets could be used to strike targets on the 13th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. A spokeswoman for the White House National Security Council told USA Today there's no confirmation that aircraft were stolen. Pictures are available online that purport to show Islamic militants standing with planes they allegedly took from an airport in Tripoli. The Huffington Post also reported that a Moroccan military expert claimed there was credible intelligence for the planes to be used in an attack on the 9-11 anniversary. Duke University and New York University have recently begun offering courses on cryptocurrencies. NYU professor Jeffrey Miller and professor David Yermak are teaching the law and business of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Yermak stated the course will teach how cryptocurrencies affect the principles of finance. In the spring of 2015, Duke University finance professor Campbell Harvey will begin teaching innovation, disruption, and crypto ventures, focusing on the potential of blockchain technology. Cryptocurrency courses are already offered at the University of Nicosia in Cyprus and the UK's University of Cumbria. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Now accepting Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co. Or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 5th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. After months of struggling to find their footing, it looks like the GOP has finally found an effective spokesman. Since Republican leaders unveiled the reanimated corpse of Ronald Reagan at a fundraising event last week, the undead former president has quickly emerged as the new face of the Republican Party. Since Reagan was brought back from the grave by GOP leaders in a top-secret $2.2 million reanimation project, poll data shows Reagan with a higher favorability rating than all other high-profile Republicans combined. The voters know Reagan, they trust Reagan, when he moans at them, they're going to listen. And there's questions as to whether he still has capacity for thought, and he does uh, eat people, but big picture, he's the best option they have right now. And appeared in a series of GOP ads promoting the Republican Party's traditional values. Congress and the president say they're trying to help fix our country's economy. <laughs> Ronald Reagan and the Republican Party have the right idea for America's future. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever's on your mind. And the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. We have just barely dug into the seven, what they call, strangest libertarian ideas, according to Salon and Alternet. And the ostensible reason for all this attention being given to libertarianism 
is likely because, well, the ideas seem to be having some level of an impact. People are interested oh. in this. Ron Paul, for instance, uh, really kind of stirring up uh, the apple cart. I would agree with you on that, but I would, however, uh, claim that uh, I, I would say that, it's yes, it's the popularity of the ideas, but I would say that it's mostly Rand Paul's uh, as the, at this point, the only Republican possibility for running for president. And I think that what they're trying to do is undermine the philosophy of libertarianism because they believe— Rand Paul's not even a libertarian, though. That, that's what he says, right. and, but lots of people believe otherwise, right, on all sides of the political I'm gonna spectrum. I'm going to go with what he says. Fine. It he's the guy. No, I didn't ask you whether or right. not you believed it because I know what you believe, Ian. Okay. You don't believe anybody who's not a you know, libertarian on every issue every time is, is not a libertarian at all. That's correct. But— um, Rand Paul's libertarian on many issues, and you would probably agree more issues than most politicians. Mm. So um, anyway, we're talking about this first uh, this first number here that the, the, we're par- according to some quotes from Murray Rothbard, who is a known libertarian uh, thinker who wrote a number of books when he was alive, and they've quoted him saying he thinks the parents should have the legal right to not feed a child. And the way it comes off is kind of callous, and it it re uh, it brings up one of my critiques of the liberty movement. And and you pointed out, well, this is an academic text. Well, okay, it's being read by average people. So uh, let's try to be compassionate. You shall wish we? that you wrote the acad- uh, you know academics wish that they wrote texts that uh, the average person would uh, would read. But I get where you're coming from. Well, I can tell you, I read uh, I'd never actually read any Rothbard prior to the time I was in jail. And the book that I read by him was, I think... For Civil Disobedience. Yeah. Uh, the book that I read by him was, I think, For a New Liberty. Uh-huh. And I thought it was a very easily uh, readable book. It was written uh, fairly uh, easily, you know, as far as, like, not academic sounding. It wasn't highfalutin, you know. I liked uh, his uh, Conceived in Liberty. I felt that, that um, it's a history, and it was, you know, it, it, looked at, uh, lib- it looked at history in a whole new light. I actually was able to read through the book easily, and if, it, if I had felt it was academic, I'd probably have put it down even though I was in, uh, in jail and had nothing better to do. Because uh, academic texts always feel, I feel like I'm being talked above and, yeah. you know. But I didn't get that from him. Uh, regardless, whether he writes in an approachable style or not is another question to how persuasive uh, his points are. And just, you know, throwing it out there and suggesting that parents should be free to let their children just die, I think, is that kind of callous, libertarians have no heart uh, that's where people on the left, for instance, get the idea that libertarians don't have a heart because of statements like this. And I, I just, I'm just a general critic of that kind of thing. Uh, and I think that uh, that's why I love Mary Ruart and her book, Healing Our World, which I think is so excellent because, because she takes it's hard the same, to make that argument about her. She takes the same ideas. She yep. takes the same freedom oriented ideas and she communicates them in ways that are compassionate. She communicates them in ways that people can emotionally connect with. And because most people aren't going to think logically, especially when it comes to the question about, oh, I don't know, what to do with a baby. Uh, that is unwanted. And and even further, as we were saying in the last hour, just to bring you up to speed in case you're just tuning in, the next question really, and I think this is a, an important one, and you threw an answer out at the very end of the segment, Mark, so I'd like you to expound on that. But uh, the next question is, what about a baby that is, uh, you know, it's been born and it's really messed up. It's got some kind of crazy deformities that are, you know, pushed its heart is pushed up against its chest and there's, you know, some kind of disease that it's got and it's not looking good. Maybe it's not even going to last uh, 2 years. And if it does last the 2 years, it's going to be a very expensive 2 years. It's going to be in the hospital the whole time. One of those just horrifying sure. situations, the last thing that any parent would want for their children. Uh the question is does a does the parent have the right to allow a deformed baby to die? But I'd go even further. Should a parent have the right to uh, to take the life of, uh, you know, through a doctor, through some sort of a, like Jack Kevorkian style uh, situation? Right. I'm not talking about uh, lopping his head off no, in the like, kitchen with a butcher knife. No. Yeah. Like through like through the process of taking the dog to the vet and having but the dog put down. You do you understand. S- that, you said no. Correct. Well, you do understand that. There is no moral difference between ending a child's life in the kitchen with a butcher knife and taking it to the hospital in order to be put down or some clinic in order to be put down in a more humane way, right? Like the, 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 you're, you're talking about the, the view of things. The farmer mm-hmm. goes to shoot old Yeller. Yep. 
it feels bad because he's using a gun and he's doing it out back. Mm -hmm. But when my cat, Senior Grouchy Pants, passed away a few years ago, uh, I mean, he had bone cancer. Both of his legs were broken from jumping off of a off of the counter onto the floor, mm. a, or a chair, uh, a high chair onto the floor, and he was in terrible condition. He wasn't going to live much longer. Putting in his uh, his legs in splints wasn't going to do him any good. So I had the vet put him down, and he sort of went to sleep. And you know, by the way, they had to give him a double dose. Like that's just how mean Ooh, this animal geez. was. He was just that mean. He was he was burning through their their death serum. Um, but you know, I, I loved him, and it seemed fine and peaceful the way he went. She stayed with me, the vet stayed with me the whole time, and, and off he went. But really, what's the difference between me taking him out and putting a bullet in his head in the backyard? It would have been, you know, The difference probably, is the perception. It's completely the perception. But I don't know if, uh, and I think that really this is part of the larger question here that we're discussing is, is it really immoral to end the life of something that is in suffering? And I don't think it is. I, um, I, I It's very difficult to talk about. Right? Why would it be moral to end your dog or cat's life, but not the child. Because not uh, the deformed, uh, you know, deformed sick child. I, I remove non-human persons from the debate when talking about making decisions on life and death because I still eat meat. Okay, so if you want to have a conversation mm -hmm. about eating meat, I'll I'll be happy to have that conversation with you. But at this point, I choose to decide when my animals live and when they die. Yeah. Um, whereas when you're talking about people, currently no one lets me make a decision on when other people die. And they shouldn't because I believe I'm significantly better than most people. I think I'm smarter. I think I, uh, you know, I, I'm more aware. I, I pay attention. Lots of people out there. <laughs> so ridiculous. They don't, they, you know, well, oh, I see. You can decide. I don't agree with you on that, you by the way. You can decide when a child's in, a baby's in pain, and you can decide when they're suffering, and you can I'm decide when they need to go. That. I'm not saying that. I, I can't have a baby. I had a vasectomy at age 23, so I don't have to face any of these questions in my life. Yeah, oh, is that convenient? It is convenient. As a matter of fact, it was the best $700 I'd ever spent. It's very convenient. <laughs> I highly recommend vasectomies, gentlemen. Uh, and so, anyway. It's the only male birth control. Well, that and condoms. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously a decision like that isn't something that anyone takes lightly. Uh, never is it taken lightly unless you're a psychopath. To take that lightly, and it would be a decision made based on medical advice. It would be a decision made based on what is the best in the opinion of the people who care the most, not in the opinion of some judge or in the opinion of our callers or whoever. Speaking of callers, let's go to Corey. Corey is calling from Georgia, and he is on Skype. Our Skype username, by the way, is lrn.fm, so feel free to connect with us there. Go ahead, Corey. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey there. Um I've been listening and my head's been wanting to explode between Mark conflating uh, Rothbard's principle with pro-choice, pro-life uh, abortion policies and ESCO conflating uh, Rothbard with all libertarianism. Um, I think both of these are huge mistakes in uh, with collectivist thinking going on. Um, if we look at it, Respect for the individual or disrespect for the individual has led to some of the most significant uh, horrors in the history of the world. Um, if you look at the 20th century and the plight that progressivism has had on the entire world, we're talking about one theoretical child and progressivism led to eugenics. <laughs> um, it's led to believing that the group was better than the individual and that the individual, individual could be treated in any way for the benefit of the state and the government. And Corey, I want you to hang on. We'll bring it back here and let you make your point uh, with more time. 855-453. That is the toll-free number brought to you by Pro XPN. Your thoughts are certainly welcome. It's Free Talk Live. 
Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation, easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, Angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. The DEA doesn't dabble with users. They go after the big dogs. Yeah, and I'm certain they have dabbled with users, and they would if they thought they, they could the get DEA? something. The they, DEA? They would if they thought they could get somewhere with it. Maybe but- a user who's snorting three pounds a, a week, something where they could actually connect to a, a player. Yeah. But most users are just buying from other users. I mean, in the cocaine world, when you are uh, a user, you've got to support your habit somehow. Right. And if you're not willing to go and knock over convenience stores and break into people's cars and hurt people to get the cash for your habit, then the only other choice for you, if you're not wealthy, is to sell cocaine to others. Right. And so most people will go and pick up whatever amount of coke they uh, they do, and then they'll sell to certain specific people who are their friends. Like he was saying, he was selling to his neighbor across the street. The DEA is not going to mess with that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, the toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Not an easy issue uh, that we are discussing right now. The, the question of you know what to do, what is immoral, what is moral, what is right and wrong, appropriate, inappropriate, in the case of a deformed baby, someone who uh, is born really just critically problematic. Uh, their body is just warped. It's messed up. They've got some kind of disease to go along with it. Life is not going to be pleasant. Life is going to be arduous and, and difficult. 
and expensive uh, as well for the parents. What to do in that circumstance? We'll continue with the discussion. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Here on Free Talk Live, we're big fans of alternative currencies, gold, silver. If you want to grab gold and silver, go to gold.freetalklive.com, Midas Resources. We've been teamed up with them for a long time, and they do a great job of getting you gold and silver, and they can do it fast. gold.freetalklive.com. Also, very fast, to get Bitcoin, you can go to ExpressCoin.com. ExpressCoin.com, you can use it in the United States and Canada. Maybe you've heard about Bitcoin. It's a decentralized currency, not issued by any government or any bank. And it's amazing. In fact, companies as large as Dell Computers are now taking Bitcoin. Uh, in fact, uh, Wikipedia also now taking Bitcoin for contributions. Even small mom-and-pop shops in real life are taking Bitcoin. Bitcoin's an amazing technology that puts the power of money in the hands of the people rather than the bankers and the governments, and that's why it's, of course, such a threat to the state. Luckily, there are great organizations like ExpressCoin that make it easy to get Bitcoin. Now, you have to get a wallet first. And if you haven't gotten your Bitcoin wallet, go to blockchain.com. You can download one from there and get it on your smartphone. Make it easy to have Bitcoin anywhere you go. Uh, but you've got to load the wallet with Bitcoin. And the way you do that is by going to expresscoin.com. You can load up. Actually, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin are all available through expresscoin.com. You pay with money order, check, or wire transfer, even cash deposit. And uh, it's so easy. And they really care about customer service over there at ExpressCoin. The price is also unbeatable. 3% is what you'll pay above $40. If you buy more than $40 worth of Bitcoin, it's a 3% transfer fee, which is the best I've seen in the business. But if you do less than $40 and use code FTL, there's no transfer fee. So if you've been thinking about getting into Bitcoin and you're, eh, you don't want to spend more than you have to, well, then go to expresscoin.com, buy less than $40 worth, use code FTL, and there's no transfer fee. Really, there's no uh, risk what, whatsoever to that transaction. There's really no question as to how to get into Bitcoin. It's expresscoin.com. Now, obviously, there's risk involved in buying Bitcoin. It could go down you know, tomorrow, but it could also go up. And it's my belief that as more companies begin to accept Bitcoin, as we're seeing happen, uh, that it's less likely to go down in the future and more likely to go up. It's That's really just prediction. about adoption. That's my prediction, you know, and it's what it's worth. It's just a guy with a microphone. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. The, uh, uh, that's the ProXPN toll-free line. We also have Skype, and that's where Corey is on the line from Savannah. And, Corey, you had precious little time to really begin to say anything in the last segment, so go ahead with what your point was. Yeah, really all I was saying was that this, this is one instance where the principle of respecting the individual is being applied by Rothbard. Um, but at least uh, libertarians are honest enough to uh, say what the logical conclusions of principles might be legally. That does not give it, I mean, just like Rothbard says, uh, this does not mean that morally or socially this is the right thing to do. But if you apply the same logical principle, the same logic to the principle of respecting the individual, then there's no way that you would be able to aggress against another human being and euthanize them after they're born um i don't understand I don't, what you're saying there okay so you were talking about being able to euthanize a child who was born deformed yeah um if you apply that principle then you can't say that you can actively do something to end their life uh because you're if you're respecting their individuality mm -hmm. as a human being and their individual rights then you have no right to end their life that is essentially saying well i can't afford this um, so for the good of the group, for the good of me, I'm going to end that person's Well, it could life. also be the good of the child who is uh, deformed and maybe even decision. in pain. You don't get to make that decision. You Why not? Decision. You made the decision to bring it into the world. Why can't you decide the reverse? Okay. Let's start applying that principle to other things. Um, <laughs> you, you don't get to make decisions for other people. If all people, you'd think that you would understand that. So— um, well, wait, so you're saying that in your mind, it's more humane and more moral to allow a in pain, deformed child to starve to death rather than put it out of its misery. Now, this is where you're missing the point, Ian. Um, where you're missing the point is that it's not about whether it's moral. Mm. It's whether when you apply the principles logically where you end up. And this is the reason that that Rothbard shouldn't be used to malign the libertarian movement because he's an academic making a very theoretical point. 
Um, within academia, you do that, except for libertarians are actually honest about what the logical conclusions might be of libertarianism and the, and what the ethics of libertarianism is. But isn't libertarianism a moral f uh, philosophy? I mean, isn't the idea but, of non-aggression, not aggressing against individuals? But the point here is, Ian, is, is if you – because essentially that is aggression, right? Mm -hmm. Like – uh, okay, so if if a child is you know has terrible deformities and likely not to live twenty years or whatever, putting it killing it is aggression, right? I think that's definitely an argument that you could okay, uh, that you could make. Now, a, a but child, you're saying that a leaving it to complete, starve isn't. What's that? You're saying leaving it to starve is not an act of aggression. You haven't done anything at that point. That's the argument that uh, yeah. that Rothbard's making. Um, now, let me ask you this: a child's completely healthy, but two years old needs your help. You don't want to give that help anymore. I believe there's some uh, sick dude that's on trial recently for putting uh, putting his having his child uh, left a 22 month old leaving it in the car to cook. Yes, and those people are disgusting. Right. Now, morally, morally disgusting. Why shouldn't if you can adduce if you can put a uh, unhealthy child out of its misery? Why can you not put a healthy child of its out of its misery? And if you can put a healthy child out of its misery, why can you not put a healthy adult adult that you brought into this world? For instance, I'm 43. Why can my 73 year old <laughs> mother not kill me? I mean, you have to be able to apply these things consistently, or you don't have a philosophy. You have a bunch of willy nilly emotional bullcrap. Now you can have that because that's the world we. We live in. We live in mm. the willy-nilly yeah. emotional bullcrap right. world. But if you want to talk about a philosophy, let's talk about a philosophy. If you want to talk about willy-nilly emotional bullcrap, call in at mm -hmm. 855 450 free, and you can make uh, mm. you can lambast me for taking a theoretical position. Well, the reason position. why things are looked at as moral or immoral just has to do with how people feel and think about those things, right? So obviously, when it no, comes to I, I disagree putting, entirely. Okay, I think that there is a moral truth in the universe. I disagree yes i know right so you can go on with your willy-nilly emotional bullcrap right. defining morality in whatever way you want mm -hmm. and um you know whatever feels good you're oh, defining yeah. your morality in however you, way you want to as no, well i believe that there i i, I believe subjective isn't it? i believe that we can logic our way to it you don't mm. believe in logic you don't believe it exists what are you talking about you believe it is an agreement between That's people ridiculous Corey, go ahead I don't know about what you just said, Mark. I don't know if you can logic your way to it because when you start applying your limited knowledge, that's what Hayek was always was talking about, is that we have limited knowledge. Hayek, did, have, Hayek didn't believe in true libertarianism either. Corey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Neither did Mises. Who's right? What about you? What do you think? It's Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillard.com. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 
Call right now, 800-208-5187. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. We're here to take your calls about anything you want to discuss. Just dial in toll free at 855-450-FREE, though. The conversation has been about, not abortion, but about what about a baby that has been born, but has been born deformed, has been born sick, both deformed and sick, uh, to the point where it's going to have a very difficult life. And uh, the life, if you can sustain it for any period of time, will cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars over the first just few years. Uh, you know, at what point is it OK, if ever, to decide that that life shouldn't continue? And that's a, I think it's an interesting question. You're welcome to comment. The toll free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, we had a guy on the line a moment ago, Corey, basically arguing that, uh, you know, this is not this is aggression. And Mark, you're saying that uh, that it is aggression uh, to to take this uh, this baby's life. And I think that, yes, arguably it is absolutely aggression. But is there an exception? Should there be exceptions to the non-aggression principle, as the libertarians call it? We can def- uh, we can dig into that here in a moment. But a lot of people who appreciate the ideas of freedom, whether they agree on all of the issues or not, many of them are moving to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, and that's an idea of bringing liberty-oriented people all together to the same geographic area so we can have an impact and actually have uh, you know, maybe see some more freedom in our lifetime. Hopefully a lot more uh, if enough people come here. One of those members of the Free State Project is Andrew Jones. Unfortunately, he won't be coming to New Hampshire anytime soon because he's currently on house arrest pending a trial for him being one of the four administrators, allegedly, of the Silk Road, an underground black marketplace with all kinds of interesting things that you can buy there, namely uh, illegal drugs. And so Andrew Jones is faced with uh, basically the rest of his life in prison over running this website, and he needs your help. Uh, If you care about the war on drugs, you want to end the war on drugs, please help Andrew Jones by going to DrewsDefense.org. If you appreciate the Silk Road and the stuff that was being done there to help make the black market a better place, please help out Andrew Jones by going to DrewsDefense.org. Well, the black market would—it's not that I'm delighted by the black market, but I— would prefer to see any market safer. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the Silk Road absolutely did bring more safety to the black market. It probably even saved lives. There's a good, there's a solid argument for that. Uh, Drewsdefense.org. You can go and commit or you can contribute rather via PayPal or Bitcoin. That's Drewsdefense.org. And hopefully he'll get through this and uh, not have to spend too much time in prison and can make the move up here to New Hampshire with the rest of us as part of the Free State Project. Go to Drewsdefense.org to help that out. So uh, let's see. We were just talking about the the question, or I asked the kind of the question of the non-aggression principle. The, the statement was made that, well, it's bad to get rid of the libertarian position. Seems to be, and this is your position, right, Mark? That it's it's bad to end on purpose a disfigured, uh, diseased baby's life that's going to have a horrifying uh, life, is already having a horrifyingly painful, terrible life. You're saying it's wrong to do that because it's a violation of the principle of non-aggression. But aren't there situations in which that principle doesn't really make any sense? Well, I don't know that it necessarily isn't even a violation of the non-aggression principle and that it m- might be more fundamental. So there's this old uh, sort of ethical question. You are standing at a switching station station it is not your job you are simply happen to be at a switching station you are not paid by the uh, railroad station as a switcher or anything like that you just happen to be here Mm -hmm. there is a careening train coming down the tracks Um, it is out of control there is a person tied up on the tracks Mm -hmm. you could pull the bar on the switcher and you could kill the train and the engineer um or you can leave it in place and it will kill the person on the tracks. Mm-hmm. What do you do? And then whatever decision you make, you're then vilified for your answer, right? Like, you're bad, you're wrong, and all the guesses are made. Mm-hmm. You got it? Well, the fact is, if you hadn't been there, you have a moral obligation, the same moral obligation that a person in a coma has, which is to say you have no obligation to stop that train from running over that person. That's correct. You may say, oh, right, there are six people tied up and there's one person in the cab of the train. I will trade one life for six. And I think that many people... Then you've chosen to end someone's life at that point. You have been chosen to the end the life of an individual and you have chosen to save the life of six. And many people would agree with you and you probably won't go to prison or anything like that. But do you understand... What does that have to do with the question of the deformed baby? Because uh, if one chooses not to make an action, one has not made a moral choice... Mm -hmm. Whereas when one chooses to make an action, one does make a moral choice. The killing of a child is different than letting a child starve to death. Now, I have a great deal of sympathy, Ian, and I probably would err with you. That if we were in a situation like, you know, I don't know, you and I are stranded with a deformed baby on a desert island. Uh, Survival is hard enough for you and I as it Mm -hmm. is. This baby is likely to not survive, uh, you know, the course of three or four weeks. We might as well do it now. Like, I get it. I understand where we're where we're at. But this is understand that this is simply a a moral dilemma, an abstract moral dilemma. And in that point, because today. In this culture, people will take care of babies that are in this condition, generally, or somebody will take them on, generally. So when you're talking about today in the United States or Western civilized countries, then this question sort of becomes moot. If you're talking about uh, people who are hunters and gatherers in Papua New Guinea— Nobody's proposing to fly airplanes over and bomb them because they make these decisions. All right, so that didn't answer my question, but we'll go uh, back to that here in a moment. Charlotte is with us first, though, listening in Washington, somewhere in Washington. You're on Free Talk Live, Charlotte. Yes. Uh, your analogy is really fantastic. Let me give bring it uh, down to earth a little bit with a little background. My mother used to teach crippled children in a hospital. A hospital school situation. She was with them for 30 years. Uh, this was quite a while ago, but and, and before she started teaching there, there were many parents who would reject these deformed children and give them to the home and hospital for the crippled children. Yeah. That was the decision that the parents made. Then the decisions were up to the to the uh, powers that be, and of course they were professional with all this kind of stuff. And many times, the the uh, deformities were more abhorrent to the parent 
than they were to the professionals who had means to help these these children. In many cases, they, they survived, and they had very good lives. Another thing is we don't ask the child, and naturally we don't ask a, a newborn because they can't make that choice for Right. Mm -hmm. But But as teaching these children after they uh, were in the home and hospital for crippled children for a number of years, she had the dilemma of what she would have done had that child been hers. And so she asked the kids, and she said, if you had a chance, and of course this was a moral question for her, if you had a chance to go to heaven without living and living the, the, with your deformities, or if you had the chance to say you wanted to live, what would your choice be? And to, to every child, they wanted to live because they could manage their difficulties. Very interesting. Hmm. How many yeah. children do you think she asked this question of? I mean, it's an uh, informal I, poll, I understand, but um, yeah, you know, I yeah. love a poll as much as the next guy. Oh, this was a classroom of first graders. Hmm. She had uh, varying sizes of classes, of course, and after polio was uh, eliminated, uh, they, they, this, the hospital had to change their focus because they didn't have enough patients. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, I guess that makes perfectly good sense. And, and it's interesting she included heaven in this question, right? Like, so she gives, uh, you know, the great opiate as an option, mm. and everyone still chooses life. It's interesting. Charlotte, thanks for sharing that wow. story. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number 855-453. That's brought to you by ProXPN, by the way. You can chime in here with your thoughts in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up next. My question, uh, I want to recap that here in a moment. The question is, yeah, libertarians are interested in this non-aggression principle. We like the idea of living by that principle. But should principles have exceptions sometimes? We'll come back with more here in moments. 855-450-FREE. And I'll give you another example that doesn't have to do with a baby. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call one 855 905 my tv sign up for packages starting as low as 19.99 and there's no equipment to buy you get free hd tv upgrade a free dvr upgrade and free professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas 
of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here in the remaining moments. Maybe enough time to get you in if you dial now. 855-453. That number brought to you by ProXPN. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live is brought to you by Keenvention 2014. It's coming up October 31st through November 2nd, right here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, at the beautiful Best Western uh, here in town, which I hear is being remodeled, as a matter of fact. Uh, Dar- uh, Daryl actually went down there today and uh, says it's looking better than ever, and it's uh, it was already a decent hotel. And yeah. so, uh, anyway, it's a great event, Keenevention. It's kind of an intimate uh, event. There was about 100 attendees there last year, just over me, about 110, 115 people. And uh, a big chunk of them are liberty activists from here in New Hampshire. You've heard us talk about the movement here in New Hampshire, a lot of the the activism that happens here from the legislative side of people actually winning election who care about freedom. That actually happens in New Hampshire. And they're winning elections as Democrats and Republicans. We're going to have a legislative panel, uh, which is going to be headed up by Mark Warden, who's a sponsor of ours here on Free Talk Live and a huge uh, activist in the, the political sphere up here in New Hampshire. We're going to have yep. a cop block panel, which was just announced with the host of uh, Cop Block Radio and some other great cop blockers at Key Invention. So we're going to talk about everything from direct action in the streets activism to the state house and how to make a difference there. And it's a great event. It started last year, and you can actually go to keenvention.info. You can watch videos of every single speech and every panel from last year. You get a good taste of what it's going to be like. It's a lot like, to some extent, any hotel convention you've ever been to. There's panels, there's speakers, there's people milling about. But it's Uh, what they're talking about is the issue. But yeah, it's what they're talking about, and it's the people. It's the crowd of people that you get to meet. And in this case, it's not much of a crowd because it's small, so you get to meet everybody uh, if you want to. And I think that lends a level of intimacy to the event that the other events that happen in New Hampshire don't have. The Liberty Forum, which the Free State Project puts on in uh, in the wintertime, which we love, uh, it's 500, 700 people. I mean, there's a lot of people there over that weekend, and you can't possibly meet everybody, but at Keenvention, you definitely can. And you can learn a lot about activism while you're there, and come on out, and you can experience Keen. You can experience New Hampshire during the fall. It's a beautiful time of the year uh, to be up here, and it's going to be during Halloween weekend, so we're going to have a little bit of spooky fun uh, as a result of that. Derek J. is right now planning the Halloween costume contest party uh, for Friday night at Keenvention, so very exciting. And we'll let you know more. You can go to keenvention.info. Grab your tickets for just $60 for the entire weekend. And as far as hotel conventions cost, that's a great price. Sure is. Uh, Keenvention.info. Go and check it out there. So real quick, uh, I said that there's this thing in the libertarian movement, the non-aggression principle. This is the principle upon which all of the liberty movement is built, essentially. The idea that, hey, it's not right to aggress against people, not right to use aggressive force to start something, to uh, to threaten somebody, to hold a gun to somebody's head, to hurt somebody who hasn't first harmed you. Uh, that's kind of the idea behind the non-aggression principle. And it's a darn good principle. It's one worth living by. But there are certain times when 
maybe it shouldn't really pl- apply or it doesn't really make sense. And I think, I don't know if it was you, Mark, that came up with this one, but I'm willing to give you credit for it. Uh, the standing in, the person standing in front of the bus argument, right? So there's someone standing in front of a bus, not on purpose, presumably. You don't really know. You're there on the city street. You see someone who is pr- about to get hit by a bus. This could really harm them or possibly end their life. So, you don't say the term bus. Because you expect them to live. Right. You, being somebody who appreciates life uh, and appreciates, you know, maybe you would also appreciate being saved from being hit by a bus. You could put yourself in that person's shoes. You heroically jump up within the right amount of time to allow you are both not hit by the bus. And you manage to save the individual by shoving them out of the way as, you know, as hard as you need to in order to move them. But maybe a little, it ended up being a little bit too hard and, and it hurt. And, you know, you, you, Break broke, some ribs or you something. broke a rib or they, they fall into the uh, the pavement in a, in a way that, you know, shatters some sort of bone. It hurts. This is uncomfortable. You know, and but they, they survived. And it's pretty clear you used aggression in that case. You I'd definitely say that's true. used aggression. You violated your principles. <laughs> but you did it for a reason that presumably, now you don't know for sure, the person may have been trying to commit suicide, uh, but presumably that person did not want to get hit by the bus on that particular day. If, the, you're, um, if you're committing suicide by getting hit by a bus, you are aggressively acting against somebody else's vehicle. And that's true. anyone is within their rights to prevent you from doing that. Okay, well, either way, I'm presuming the person wasn't. If somebody's taking a key to the hood of a car, I think I am within my reasonable rights to assume that that person is not keying their their own own car. car. Fair enough, Mark, but it doesn't matter. You're still using aggression against somebody who uh, they were standing still and you pushed them out of that spot. So you've aggressed against them. And that's clearly an issue or an instance where the non aggression principle just doesn't apply when we're talking about. Protecting life when we're talking about helping somebody, doing something we would presumably want done for ourselves, even if it costs them a broken rib, they got their life out of the deal. Yeah, you would assume. So when you look at a situation like that, and we could, I'm sure if we thought for long enough, think of some other situations where let's bend this principle because it's seems to be the right thing to do in that A lot of people spend a lot of time trying to bend that principle. I don't. Well, this is a legitimate example of this. And so then the question would be, if the person did not, in point of fact, want to be pushed out of the way, or they're just a jerk, they could try (laughs) to sue you. And they could say, you aggressed against me. I think in today's litigious society, it is reasonable to expect somebody that you save from being hit by a bus and break their ribs to sue you. There's a good argument for that. Uh, But so there's a chance something like that could happen, in which case... Then, uh, you know, your argument would be that, well, you would have thought that it would have been the right thing to do. You had no intention to harm the person. But ultimately, yeah, you did violate the principle. You had to be willing to accept the consequences. as, And that was a possible consequence before you save that person and possibly harm them in the process of saving them in order to save their life. You had to accept in advance that there might be some fallout from that, that Mm -hmm. maybe this person would possibly be angry about it. They would bring you to court or something like that. And if you're willing to accept the consequences of that, then I think that that's it's not a problem. It's not, you know, you shouldn't be punished for that necessarily. I don't think it's a I don't think violating the non-aggression principle in certain instances is this unholy thing that must uh, be the, this involuntary thing. Well, you know, uh, taking it back to the baby, I would say that uh, that all much of child care is a violation of the, the non-aggression, non-aggression principle. principle. I have uh, said over and over on this show that, uh, you know, I believe that babies are humans. And I had a son. I'm clear that when I held him down in his little chest, I didn't push too hard, but mm-hmm. I held him right in the middle of his little chest to hold him onto the changing table. He would have liked to have gotten up. To ch- he did. Mm-hmm. He probably would have liked to have get a, gotten a handful of what was in his diaper, you know, mm-hmm. and God knows what he would have done with it. But <laughs> I kept my, you know, I kept his hands out of it yeah. for the most part. I wasn't always successful, mind you, but I did my best with wipes at that or point. Or like when you pulled him away from running into the street, for instance, when he was running down towards the road. Yeah, he didn't house. really make it that far, but I certainly did use force to grab yeah. him and, and bring him back to the uh, uh, b- back to the house. Because you can uh, put yourself in that person, the little person's shoes, and say to yourself, you probably would have wanted to continue life rather than running into the street and getting hit by a car, so therefore it was the right thing to do 
to violate the non-aggression principle in that case. And then goes back to the question of the deformed, sick baby that is, you know, a horribly living in a horrible amount of pain. You can't ask the baby for its input. Maybe down the line it would have survived and everything would have been fine. Or maybe it would have bled out internally in another month or from whatever the problem was and ultimately died a painful death. And if you and the other loved one in your life, your partner, who uh, you created the child with. I call her my wife. Uh, if you both agree that the right thing to do is to end the suffering of this child, I don't think that's wrong. Let's go on with Crichton in Louisville, Kentucky. You're on Free Talk Live, Crichton. How's it going, guys? Hi there. Go it's ahead with your thoughts. Well, I'm just going to touch that just for a moment and say that there's no legal system that can that has any consistent or logical way they deal with dependence. Yeah, but, uh, I bet you're right. I, I called because a couple days ago you had a conversation about tracking license plates and how New Hampshire does not allow tracking devices for license plates. I wanted to give you the bad news that since about 2000, every vehicle sold in the United States has a transponder in it called a TIMS. Uh, you misunderstood. Uh, the 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 law in New Hampshire is that the police departments are not allowed to use license plate scanning devices, which could be used to track, but it could also be used to do other things like you know ticket people and things like that. So I'm sorry if I miscommunicated, but you can tell us about the Tims in like 20 seconds if you want. Yeah, the Tim system is tire inflation uh, monitoring system, and it uses a transponder with lithium batteries in each of your wheels. They have uh, unique identification numbers. And your transponder mounted at an intersection can track anyone that goes through that intersection. Wow. So they do know. Fascinating. And they can know. Thanks for sharing that. Still, New Hampshire, the one state out of all 50 that does not allow police to use license plate scanners, and there's no doubt about that. I thank you, Crichton. We'll see you tomorrow night online at freetalklive.com. In the meantime, are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 